You know, I, I have, I have hope. I have hope that it, maybe there's a slim chance that it could be overcome. Uh, but it just scares me that everybody's bought into this right-left paradigm again. They've bought into it hook, line, and sinker. Dad will play. He's just resisting. It's pretty. The inevitable. It's pretty all in sometimes. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. Uh, we're going to be chatting with a friend of the show, John Brisson, a little bit later about uh, some of the recent pedo stuff, uh, along with some other political stuff and some Trump bashing, which some of you guys will enjoy for a change. Graham gets a little offended, but that's okay. No, no, no. Speaking of that, we got the one and only Graham. I can't stop talking about Dungeons uh, and Dragons for long enough to report a podcast. <laughs> oh, cool. How's Re- good? Report a podcast. Record? Report? <laughs> report. Whatever the fuck. <sighs> Thanks, buddy. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm feeling a little better. Energetic. Finally today. Finally? Like, yeah, I was pretty sick there for a bit. Was that two weeks? No. No, like nine Ten days. Ten days? Nine. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, it was almost two two weeks. But it wasn't the whole, I wasn't sick the whole time. It was just like I kept thinking I was getting better, and then, boom. That's bad, too bad. So yeah. I'm not gonna say anything because yeah. I, I might end up getting sick yet. Yeah, so I just, I'm not the, gonna fucking start talking shit. I don't want to get into all my conspiratorial theories about what's going oh, on. Oh, you're not gonna tell them about your forest fires burning chemtrails off trees theory. <laughs> you're not gonna talk about that on the show. That was just a private thing. <laughs> That was just for our, our chat. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're not honestly entertaining that, or you are? Or? Well, I can't stop. I can't help thinking about it a little bit. I mean, I'm true that. I'm true really that. not. I mean, you know, there is shit getting dropped from the sky, and there is forest fires burning all those trees, and so hmm. you know, there's smoke all over the place, and a lot of those are caused by arsonists. So. There you Putting have Putting two and two and two together, and that's... Probably, two and two and together. Yeah, then you get a sore throat, and that's what happens. Two and two and two equals six? And a sore throat. Huh. That's a tough one. What were you doing on the weekend? What? What were you doing on the weekend? What do you mean? Why? Just asking. What were you doing? You went to Joe Rogan. I went to Joe How Rogan. How was it? It was good. Yeah? It was, fucking, was it pretty it was funny? funny? Yeah, it was funny. I had a good laugh. I like his stand-up. Lisa and I went. Had a good laugh. Yeah, did she laugh too? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah well, we nothing, was she offended by anything at all? Or? No, no. Was he pretty... No, yeah. He was he's pretty hard on... He was pretty fucking hard on the vegans. Oh, yeah? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. a big media. Yeah. Fucking yeah. vegan cats. Vegan fucks. And some lady vegan the, cats? What do you mean? Yeah, he's talking about vegan cats. Apparently, it's a hashtag on Instagram. Why don't you check it out now while we're talking? <clears throat> um, there's a lot of people feeding their cats vegan? Yeah, and they die and go blind in like six years. <laughs> Come on, no. Sounds about right. There was a, uh, there was a fucking. Um, but the cats are. That's not like that's. Cats are meat eaters. Yeah. Yeah, but people are stupid. <laughs> um, okay, well, bro, he's got to be on mic if he's talking because we'll get complaints from people. Oh, vegan cats. There's lots of posts. Vegan cats of Instagram, even. Yeah. Um, I got bit right here by my cat the other day in the cheek. Yeah, I saw it happen. Is he a vegan? It happened on, on stream, didn't it? Um, now he's got me wondering. No, I don't think it did. No, that was different. Is it when you guys were playing, were you guys playing fucking Dungeons and Dragons again? Yeah, I got bit by my cat. Yeah. Well, you were playing Oh, Dungeons you took a picture of me. Who? Somebody's got a picture of me. Oh, I don't know. People send me pictures of you all the time. Um, do you think it was, uh, did you think it was a dragon? No, Darren. <laughs> I wished it was. <laughs> there you go. No, Rogan was a laugh. Yeah, good. It was all new material, mostly stuff I never heard before. So that was good. I ate a bunch of edibles. I was pretty fucked up there for a while. Real fucked up. That was probably the highest I've been in fucking years, three or four years for sure, maybe longer. Super fucked up. I ate like five or six hundred milligrams. Oh, wow. A bunch of candy and stuff. And. Oh, and then I fucking destroyed a bag of Twizzlers, and I woke up with a fucking headache and a hangover. Really? Eh? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm assuming it was from all the over. sugar. Yeah, I was just gonna say it sounds just like a sugar fucking headache. destroyed because I haven't been eating a lot of sugar, and then I just fucking plow. You through just it nothing about me. the 500 milligrams <laughs> of other <laughs> stuff. It's all about the Twizzlers. Could okay. be that too. 
It'd be that too. Yeah, there was a time there I wasn't sure I was going to be able to stand up after the show was over. Really? But yeah. I was just like, See, didn't you get into weird? I was like, holy fuck, maybe I got carried away. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was too busy laughing. I forgot. You forgot that you couldn't stand up and you just stood up? Yeah. So was there an opener? Uh, Hinchcliffe. Oh, really? Yeah. He's good too. That's yeah, he's pretty too. good. Yeah. yeah. That's it, just the two of them? Yeah. How long did Rogan go on for? <sighs> fuck, I can tell you I was fucking high. <laughs> <laughs> My guess would be like 45 minutes. Part of me feels like it was over too fast, and part of me feels like it was on forever. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I don't know. My 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 concept of time was completely out the window. That was a nice little night. Did he make fun of the flat earthers or anything like that? Or any no, of that didn't make any fun of any of that. No, well, Bigfooters. Or he had a funny thing. He, uh, it, he, you know, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and he's just fucking gone totally backwards on Bigfoot and all that, like given, like really. He had a funny bit on cats and dogs. Yeah, cats and dogs. Hmm. Uh, no, it was good. Good, I know. Fairly funny and non-political. Cool. There was a heckler. <laughs> he said, shut he the planted? fuck up and sit down. I don't know. But he, he was a, extremely cutthroat with the heckler. And the way he t handled it, it was shut the fuck up and sit down? Uh, he took it the first time and then the second time. Again, I was pretty high, so my recollection <laughs> You're could be just like, like looking over, <laughs> giggling, giggling at the heckler? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty funny. She screamed something. I, I didn't really know what was going on. I could only hear what Joe Rogan was saying. And it ended with, shut the fuck up and sit down. Wow. It says cunt a lot, too. Oh, yeah. 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 But it was a laugh. Fuck, I highly recommend it. Did I tell you when I was at Stephen Wright? Shilliness was at an all-time low. Yeah. Who? Stephen Wright? Yeah, you know that guy? No. I bought spot remover for my dog, and he's gone. <laughs> the dog was guy. named Spot. Yeah, that guy. You seen him? I named my dog, come here, what was it? Was that one? Come here, go away. No, stay. Stay. Come stay. Come <laughs> I can't come. even do it. I can't even do what it. What was the other guy's name? The other fucking the hard, uh, fuck, I forget his name. But uh, one of my friends was a quick laugher, and Stephen Wright's jokes, you don't yeah. laugh quickly, right? So the Jack whole audience was quiet, hill. waiting for him to, like, you know, and and my friend was the quick laugher. He'd be laughing before the joke was even finished. Yeah. It was really quite embarrassing, because he'd laugh <laughs> out loud, and nobody was laughing yet, and then everybody would laugh afterwards. Who was the guy who used to be like... Fucking Mary had a little lamb and she fucked it. Oh, that's <laughs> Dice. Dice, yeah. yeah. Andrew Clay Dice. Little boy blue. <laughs> we should have him on the show. Is he dead? No, he's still going. Huh. I wonder if we could have him on. I doubt it. Probably not. No, he's out of our league. Yeah. So what do you got, buddy? Well, I got a couple uh, emails that I missed for stuff that came to the P.O. Box recently. I what figured I should to, catch up on those. Like, what sort of jingle? Well, just do the PO box like. jingle, but you don't have to. No, I don't want to. I don't want to dig all that up. What? For something different. What? <laughs> well, it's, it's for the PO uh, box. It's for okay. Don't don't. No, even, fuck it. Forget no it. No, forget it. Forget it. You ruined it. This is look at this. He's actually got to go to different file. What? It's not all just on one little board. Well, it used to be. Okay, forget it. Forget no, it. I'm just no, gonna read the no, emails. No, no, it doesn't have to be. No. he's already doing it. Uh, write this down, or a pencil. Why don't you send some physical mail to the Grimerica Show at P.O. Box 16033. Next line. Uh huh. 100-815, comma, 17th Avenue, SW. Next line. Uh huh. Calgary, okay. Alberta. Okay, you don't have to play the Next whole thing. Uh -huh. You Canada. have to play the whole address. Next line. Uh huh. T2T space 5H7. That's the P.O. Box. Why don't you send Darren some dirty socks? Cause he's got a dirty sock fetish. It is everyone's right. favorite jingle. <laughs> okay, this is from uh, this is from Amstermad. He says, so this he sent us a, a, a package in December as well, and he's like, I was very happy to hear the package uh, that I sent you in mid December finally reached the peel because I think it took like three months to get here. And he says, thanks for opening it live on the show. The main reason I'm sending you this very email is to inform you about a little factoid that probably could be labeled best as a synchro. If you agree, maybe Darren would be so kind as to rate it. It's a synchro. Oh, maybe I've already read this one. I might have already read this one. But wow. it's it's connected to the package that we You're got. You're fucking losing it. For the third time in my life, I'm 47 years old. He's my age too, by the way. This is a, 
This is last year. I'm going to be moving out of the moving house, he says. After 19 years of living in the center of Amsterdam, this Thursday, 1st of March, I'll be moving to a bigger house in the neighborhood city of Amstelveen. Amstelveen. The house number, of, the, fucking the house number of my new house is 272. Guess what, Great America episode is up next. Yes, indeed. You'll understand I am more than stoked to hear this upcoming episode. Thanks a bunch for the most fascinating podcast in the multiverse. Big shout out to Napoleon Doom for the magnificent artwork, to Sir Felix for the excellent jingles, and to everyone in the chats and to all the other listeners. So then um, we were just corresponding back and forth, and he's uh, he's giving me a wish, uh, happy birthday. Where is it? Where is it here? <laughs> Hope your place is good. Da, 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 da. Okay, I can't. I'm missing that part of it. Anyways, he says it's going to be a T-shirt sent by Quirty. Since you usually empty the PO box, it won't be a problem to claim it as yours. Thanks a bunch for the latest shows, except especially two ninety three. It's an eye opener. I don't know what your birthday is, but I've turned forty eight on the twenty sixth of June. So far, forty eight looks feels the same as forty seven. So, anyways, that was uh, that was him, and he welcomed me to the forty eight club. When's your birthday? July tenth, eleventh. Fuck. Nice try. I'm June twenty five. Do you know what my birthday is? Uh, March thirty. No. Uh, it, uh, no. Yeah, see. Is it March? Tenth. Ah, close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. So he says, uh, one of these days, the t-shirt will arrive in your peel box. So thanks for, oh, thanks for the t-shirt Amstramad. It was an awesome. Thanks for the joint. Awesome uh, Egyptian hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic oh, yeah. uh, portrayal of many good scenes from the Holy Grail. <laughs> Oh, that was that today. shit. I should have wore it today. That yeah. was that one. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all coming together now. Yeah. What else you got? <clears throat> I have another uh, another one about that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Right side mouther. Here's a good one for that. Yeah, you can play a jingle while I'm looking for Another it. edition of Grime American Goodies by the people, by the people. Okay, I was worried there that I wouldn't uh, wouldn't find this. Having email issues today, simple simple fix. Darren is right. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Darren is right. That's the, that's the ringtone. <laughs> that's going right. to be a jingle. So this is from Cabbage Paps. So you got a, you got a. <clears throat> He's the guy who sent the seeds. Yep. We could sell those seeds, Cabbage Paps. I've been listening to your show since your appearance on the Higher Side Chats back in February 2018. I listened for a few weeks before signing on to the $3.33 plan. I'm also a premium subscriber to Carl Woods THC and Gordon Wright's, Gordon White's Rune S- Soup. As you all provide the most valuable and interesting content. I've been loving most all, uh, what does it say? I've been, this is in lower, uh, smaller font, so it's harder to read for some reason. I've been loving most all of your episodes, and I'm working my way through the back archives because they're free. Word up. I play Cabbage Paps on Instagram, and recently, after falling victim to a scam seed purchase that never arrived, I decided to make some of my homebred medical seeds available as testers to Instagram growers to counter the negative vibes I felt after losing a small pile of Bitcoin. I felt so stupid and thought putting my own good vibes out there could help counter that feeling. While trying to think of names for my creations, I recalled Sir Felix physical male jingle and thought it would be cool to make a Grimerica show support seed and call it Black Budget. Perfect. It is a cross of Bodhi seeds, cluster funk and Black Lotus. That's perfect. Black Budget. Both strains are quite dank with Cluster Funk offering a skunky, fuely stank, and Black Lotus giving some rich, dark colors to the buds, and a grapey, fruity nose. I have no idea what he's talking about, but I'm assuming it's kind of like being a wine connoisseur or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Both are indica-dominant strains and organically produced, so they should do well under whatever closet scene Darren has going on. Brody's my closet scene. <laughs> that sounded I, dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what... I didn't really know I thought that. Is that more... Bud lingo, or is that just you know? Does that mean your own little grow closet? Yeah. Is that, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, 
I hope he had a chance to pop a few or all of the seeds and they turn out super dank. So that's what you say, pop. Pop them. Pop that's often. to grow them. You pop them. You germinate them. You germinate them. I'm a self-employed artist and service provider, so I have plenty of hours in the day to listen to all the shows and yours is always an excellent way to spend a few hours working. Thank you so much for your good work. I always indulge in the full opening ramble, ramble fest intro and love all the jingles and your consistent laughter together. I will gladly keep supporting you guys. And I look forward to hearing how the plants turn out blessings and happy gardening cabbage paps. So both these guys emailed me to remind me that they had emailed about the packages. So feel free to do that. I've been, you know, every once in a while I lose track of when something comes in and aligning it with the, previous email and stuff so but yeah, I don't have if a you don't hear back right from now. me yeah if you don't hear back from me feel but free Brody's to Brody's gonna grow some for me here soon yeah as soon as my cycle that I'm on is done I'll... And yep. but if he ends up with more of those seeds people have been asking about them so we could probably sell them how long is the if cycle he ends up selling them three well, months it'll be probably three it's, months yeah it depends yeah anywhere from like 12 weeks to probably if it's 20 indica dominant it'll be closer to 12 14 maybe so anyhow hmm. bingo bangle yeah that'd be cool so can you then make more like They're, if you grow these seeds are they gone or can you make more seeds i'm not a i'm not a breeder you, so if you grow a male you, you just have to grow a male and let it um rub it on the female and pollinate it so seeds well there's a way Really? That you can uh, physically rub it on the female no there's like some sort of silver Helps. nitrate stuff that you can spray on it and it'll turn it into a hermaphrodite and then it'll start Jeez, growing seeds. This is really? but then will the seeds be herms no that's good we got a bunch of pot guys in the fucking audience pot growers so we could definitely uh, refer to a lot of expertise if that's something we ever did get into there can there's some heavy science involved. word up we got some alaskan there's some people, gender some changing California. science going on what that's it. What, some gender what? changing science going on of marijuana plants. Yeah, not rubbing, a, rubbing shit together. Not and the kind you like. Spraying shit yeah. on and not the kind you like. Anyhow, what else you got? Well, that leads us to probably what we should talk about. We got a couple more emails as well, show. and well, it's kind of an expanded chit chat about that, a version of that. I mean, we had this great conversation with John Brisson coming up, and um, we Darren and I've been talking about different ways like we you know we we've been pushing to try and get one percent people of the people just supporting something you know even a dollar a dollar a show a dollar a month whatever right and that gives access to this black budget feed that we have which is just some extra content some additional interviews and darren and i were still gonna you know we're gonna put out some additional content in that as well just our own little stuff but it doesn't really entice a lot of people that are on the fence and we, but we still wanted to make the, you know, we still want to keep the show value for value and basically donating based and we don't want to do ads and we've always kind of said that and we don't want to back off that at all. No, but we've thought about doing a, a you know, a THC style pay, you know, we wouldn't call it a paywall because we can get around that, <laughs> but that style where like first half's free, second half is, is, uh, pay only but we're not sure you know we don't want to we do don't, that we don't we don't necessarily want to do it maybe we'll find something in the middle but we do you know obviously want to try and get you know more support too to help yeah. the show so so Ideally, should we'd I rather just more people support the show so we didn't even have to entertain or think about things like that yeah yeah then our support's gone up. It's not, you know, it's going well. We're not c complaining by any means, but we're just entertaining different models and different ideas. So do you want me to read a couple of these then, Darren, or what? Sure, read them up. Okay, so... Um, we need to get feedback from the community before oh, we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what people, anything, let's see so. what people think. The other thing is, um, I'm not going to say the names of people who uh, who wrote these, but hey, Darren and Graham, I've been listening to your podcast since you appeared on the Higher Side Chats. Jeez, that's funny. It's another one of those. I love the format and you shoot the shit intros. You guys have great chemistry. I listen to a lot of podcasts and you guys are at the top of a very large pile, but I haven't yet flicked you some dollars and here's why. 
I've long supported THC and a US $5 a month. It was manageable and worth it to get the extra hour per show. A few months ago, I figured I had a couple more bucks I could spare each month and was going to subscribe to the Grand America show when Carlwood went and upped his prices. And I backed off stretching the podcast budget any further. But in all honesty, if you guys were running the same model as THC and I had to make a hard choice of picking only one to subscribe to, I think it would now be the Grand America show. But as it stands, I can get both while only subscribing to one, which is kind of shitty, but that's economics for you. Sometimes you have to force a person's hand by holding a little back. And while you have that black budget feed, I don't think it works as well as the THC model in getting people to pull out their wallets. For me, I hate the thought of only getting half an episode, THC, but I can get by without adding yet another podcast feed, the black budget, to my overflowing playlist. Anyway, just some food for thought. Carlwood has backed himself and this product and become a little more hard-nosed about pricing, and maybe you should too. As a counterpoint, THC raising its price has forced me to question the value proposition for the first time since I subscribed, and I'm 50-50 at the moment on whether I'll stick with THC. If I do make the decision to can it, I'll definitely throw some bucks your way each month. Hmm. So he's, that's from New Zealand. A kiwi. Thanks. That's an interesting email. Yeah, very, eh? Like he's like asking his for his hand to be forced almost. Yeah, that's why it's so fascinating. Right? Like, because... Well, that's what like what he described is basically common marketing tactics. But that's for like mainstream marketing and advertising. So. Anything else? Yes, I have another one that's very, very close to now. See, this is really getting, now I'm really getting frustrated with this email. I got to do something about this. I just get frustrated with your execution of the email, mostly. Uh, see, now this is, this is. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be something you don't understand about how it works. Here. No, uh, it, it, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm open to that for sure. Yeah, I don't know how Outlook works, but Darren is right. <laughs> or maybe it doesn't like work on a Mac properly. Darren is right. All we know for sure is Darren. I mean, is right. uh, basically, what I did is I open up the emails that I want to read and I minimize them, and now they're they're, they're gone. The Can ones you like you right want. click and say show all windows or no, something? No, I'm not going to play around with anything like that. It's just that I, really important that I read that I. Uh, Read this one now. You're not going to play around with all you, that right now. It, go, I'll tell you what. You uh, let's take a side step. And we'll come back to this. Can you pull up your bar. Yeah, are they in there? No, that's where that's where I went to look for it. And... Bingo, bingo, social media jingle. Don't forget to rate, comment, and or subscribe to the grind. I'm going to go to the Facebook page today. So I posted Team Darren or Team Graham. Uh oh. We got. We got a new. You got a, Darren. Am I losing? Darren. Philip Darren. Rob says Darren. Joseph says Graham. Brent says, wait, what are we doing? A friend of the show, Brad Young, says, what? No team Sasquatch? <laughs> We got a can't decide. My mom says Darren and Graham's both of us because we're a team. But she says if she has to pick, she picks me. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Ah, uh, from Shannon. Rhetorical, impossible, and utterly unfathomable. Yin yang, dark light. You can't have one without the other. They're both so useful together. From Patrick. I will not divide them. Paul. Paul S. says his loyalty is for sale. I got from Nick, I can't keep getting them mixed up so I can't vote. Which one is the smart and handsome one? I, I said that. 
I said, that's me. And then they said, then I choose Graham. <laughs> or I said, that's Darren. Uh, I still think you're multiple personalities of a third yet unnamed party. Uh, Zuger says, neither. Team RPJ. We got to can't choose. Let's sort fight it out. Uh, here we go. Here's a good one from Blake. You're both dope. But Graham has my heart. If I was gay and he was gay, I'd ask him to get if he wanted to get gay married. Graham's my wife. Darren is my homie. I would totally trip out and take bong hits with you, Darren. But he'd be married to you. That's a little weird. We got a team Graren. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Don't make us choose. I have a soft spot for both of you. I love Darren's laugh and Graham's good nature. And we got another red pill junkie. And we had a poll. We had the poll if UFOs are aliens or government black budget. 54% Ooh. government black budget. No, There's, you know what? You know what? It could be. Okay, let, let's do this on the next poll. What percentage of UFOs, like legitimate UFOs, are I can't, black budget? I can only do can two not, questions. Can you it's got to be two to things. My, entertain my idea. Yes, but I'm just laying like out that, some big rats. I know, but it's, it's two questions. It is. Okay. It's okay. What, what percentage of legitimate USOs are aliens compared to the black budgets? 10 or 20? They have to be able to pick between two things. Yeah, it's got to uh, be. It's multiple choice. Uh, if it was on Twitter, I could do four oh, things. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Okay, sorry. But I would yeah. say all of them are black budget. <laughs> I love that. I would say, yeah, I would lead more to, I would have voted black budget as well. I was looking for the it's other. It's just not poll. common sense though. What? It's not, um, what do you call that law of simplification? Occam's razor. Occam's razor. The yeah, simplest answer is Yeah, that's the not, it's just, it's not Occam's razor. Not everything that Occam's razor doesn't solve everything. <laughs> the world is super <laughs> complex. Just kidding. <laughs> So when I'm out there meditating with a group of people for ET to come and and fucking communicate with us, it's like mass and something shows. Some shit. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's what either it is. it's either government, it's either secret government black budget craft or mass hallucination. Those seem way more probable than actual ETs paying attention to us. To me, yes, for sure. Yeah. Here we got another poll. It's 111 votes. Okay. Do you listen to our interesting ramblings or go straight to the oh. timestamp? 111 votes, 92% listen to Ram. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've always thought the intros are the better, not the better part, but some of the best part of the show. Okay, speaking of that, okay, I got the Wait, got wait, before we go back to that, I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more little thing here from the Facebook page, which our friend of the show, Lee, has been doing a lot of this Facebook stuff. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much for that. For... Just to help out, which has been getting a lot more interaction than our bullshit was getting. Um, fuck, where is it? No, I can't find it, but it's a good one. Cause I got to find it here. I got to find it. It's a good segue. Uh, so you're having the same problem I am, and I don't give you a hard time at all. What's that? You deserve a hard time sometimes. But by saying that, you kind of are. Yeah, exactly. You're just being <laughs> fucking passive aggressive about it. Okay, well, I found mine, so. You found yours? Yeah. Ugh. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Hey, Graham. Hope all is well, as well with you. I've been supporting your show with one-off donations now and then, but can't help to think that you guys could do something like the THC podcast where the second hour is for plus members. So this is part of this whole, this is now not me, me not reading, but okay. You need yeah, to, I'm listening. You need to, I'm no, listening. no, no, you need to, I'm you looking need to for pay my attention things, though, stop you're looking fuck. and pay attention. <sighs> um, it's funny how emails come in like this together. So these two came fairly close and they're about the, the, the similar, similar thing. I found my stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> Your show is great, and I think the positives outweigh the negatives in giving people more of an incentive to sign up and support more regularly. As good-natured and well-meaning most of your listeners are, myself included, it's still difficult to step forward and pay when it feels right to do so, or to sign up as an ongoing donation. I think you and Darren have built up something great, and with your listenership figures, much more people should be supporting and help you into the situation where you could just focus on the show and maybe... 
<clears throat> your jobs. There's no shame in even making a very good living from the show, and I would be happy to see that. I also understand you've taken a vow, but that's a self-inflicted, and I'm sure you can move beyond that if you like. I signed up for the THC show recently and happy to be supporting it. Since you started your show, the community has moved on and developed to a point where people are placing much more value in great podcasts and are happy to support them rather than feeling let down or put off by a paywall. This perhaps comes from yours and Darren's own prejudice for paywalls rather than your listenership. Sure, you'll always get people who complain, but you could even offer people who can't afford a subscription to email and explain as you have suggested for the black budget and perhaps let them off for free, but that a connection has been made and understood. This comes from my gratitude for your show and what you guys have been building and think there's no shame in being able to make this your livelihood and passion. Maybe you just need to rearrange things to a position that people need to support to get the full show, but that there's nothing wrong with that. People might never support it if it's free, and I bet people who easily can are the worst ones. Something to think about. Those both came in the same day? I don't know. One day apart, two days apart, I think. Mm. Uh, and then he says another one. Just uh, He sort of followed up. Just to add, as you're at the point of asking for support every show, it's especially something to think about. Unless you think the support is building significantly, I'm sure the show has become something that you did not expect when you started, and good-natured people often undervalue themselves, myself included. If your support is currently less than 1%, do you think adding a paywall would take that lower or higher? I would say significantly higher, possibly 5 to 10 and you could ask $5 a month. Again, if people complain, they can write in or call you and make special arrangements. But most of the tightly sealed wallets of listeners who love the show will most likely start loosening up to get the full episodes. And again, if this isn't worth thinking about, then you wouldn't be asking every episode. You can't offer something for free and at the same time feel frustrated that people aren't paying. So yeah, more good points. Very good points. I mean, I don't, maybe we're coming off frustrated. I, should we? I don't think we are frustrated. I think we're happy with the growth and happy with the way things are going, but we just see potential that uh, it could help out even more. So, but yeah, I don't know. Are you frustrated? What's that? <laughs> Speaking of frustrated, this, like see, this is why I want you to fucking pay attention when I'm reading an email. You missed the most profound I email it probably. All. Did you? Okay. All right. It all kind of comes back to that. Don't be a good guy. I don't know. Anymore, right? don't, do that, you know? don't be what? Don't be. Don't be the good guy anymore. We can't do. That. No, 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 no. We'll it's figure not, something. No, out. we'll figure something. Right? We'll like, figure something out. Weren't we just talking about that with the guy? Like no more. I still. Next guy? Yeah. Well, that's not. I don't. Think I that's still the have same faith thing. in these motherfuckers that they'll support us before we get to that. Well, we're definitely not going to ads or anything like that. Yeah. And pay well, you know, and and I think we would always find a way around um, a, more of a subscription based model, so that everybody can be included. Try you know? to anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll try that first. But yeah, support is meager, and I think you know we get the cancellations, and maybe we are too alt right. We're not all I right. I blame you. Wait till you hear the show with John. We're definitely not all right. Oh, We're entertaining God. all possibilities. So we forget about that. We should just get out of politics altogether. I, I agree. I don't fucking. You're care the anymore. political just, fucking junkie. You were six months ago. We just switched spots. Don't no, no. throw this all no, on no. me. Take now that easy. you're in your little Mister No More Take Mister Nice Guy mode, Take it easy. and Take you're it on easy. a diet and you're, pipe down. You know, you're, you're pipe down you know, there. Just because you haven't had any fucking bread in a couple of hours, you don't have to fucking rage out on me. Anyhow. I got last thing before we roll into that. I support the show because Matt Martin, I'm not a dick. Is this I a probably social media from, thing? from Justin Edelman. I probably wouldn't be who I am today if I hadn't found the psilocybus episode someone shared through Reddit years oh, ago. That's crazy. From Elliot Alexander, I like the subjects discussed, and we don't have enough quality Canadian shows. Grimerica is the right mix of paranormal and other topics. It's hard to even label Gr Grimerica. <clears throat> Variety show? Showing support for my fellow Canadians. Darren and Graham are very personable and are the type of people I would hang out with. I've listened to SOR, but Dave seems to have too many ghost episodes. Then in the East, we have Richard Serrett. Please let me know if I'm missing out on any other great Canadian talent. Talent. <coughs> Just, uh, what's... Uh, 
Boner party. The dark night, dark time, nighttime, 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 nighttime. pod. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of true crime. Yeah. yeah he's a right. good dude. He's got a cool format too. And uh, very well, well done. Well edited. Good. Here's a good, good one for you. From Chris Bennett. Graham rolled a critical success on his charisma check. When was that? Two weeks ago. I don't know what that means. Is that a, that's a good, that means that's I, rolled a a 20, I rolled a 20 on a dungeon. On 20. charisma? Yeah. Yeah, it means he's one charismatic mofo. <laughs> From Zachary Keen, we don't want to see you turning tricks to keep it going. Could come to that. We have one that says karma. From Shannon, I do what I do. I love the boys and what they do. <clears throat> we got another karma. From Ann Newman, it's the right thing to do. And it's the easy way to do it. From Nick, I was promised nude pics for becoming a monthly donor. You are promised calf pics. Graham posted them. No, I didn't. Oh, post Did some, somebody else po- post, post some, some calf pics. So I can listen to jingles about Graham being an all-in believer in chemtrails. Jed Barnett, these two ass clowns make me laugh and have great topics. From Kem- Kenneth Palmer, it is real. Jeff Dorizo, I'm investing in the infrastructure of the new media paradigm. By that, I mean the paradigm that allows true freedom of speech without the conversation being limited to whatever the CIA or Mossad wants to talk about. Oops, I've said too much. Yes, you have, you anti-Semite son of a Who bitch. Uh, I'm just kidding. That's friend of the show, Jeff D., oh, our nice. video consultant. Right. <laughs> He's got the keys to the YouTube castle, I think. All right, well, we better get the uh, UFO quote of the week out of here so we can get these UFO quotes Wait, and start doing... I gotta play this, obviously. Graham is an all-in believer in chemtrails. Chemtrails. I should have played that when you were talking about the chemtrail trees. Yeah. The campfires. I was just in, in BC. It was pretty smoky. Yeah. The chemtrail fire smoke is thick. You can yeah. smell the chemicals. Yeah, probably. Yeah. How's your throat? It's crazy. <laughs> It's uh, throat stickly. There's a lot of people. With, I mean, the smoke is bothering people regardless of what it's made of. Only you filthy non smokers. Yeah, maybe. Eh, I probably would have been fine if I, when I was smoking. Hey, uh, do you want to do the UFO quote jingle in, please? So I we thought we were us? done with you. No, we're not done. We got a few more to do. How many more is a few more? I don't know. I'm doing. T- I'll, I'll do two short ones here for you, like really short ones. Oh, these are some, these are some fucking good ones too. These are this Brody I like this one. Brody I like the second one. Every time you say that, this was no ordinary UFO. Scores of people saw it. It was no illusion, no deception, no imagination. And that is Air Marshal Azim Dopata, Zimbabwe, speaking out about a UFO sighting over the country in 1985. The That's second one. one. Yeah, yeah. UFOs are up. real and they come and they may come from outer space. That's General Kanshi Ishikawa, Chief of Air Staff, 1967. Want me to do another little one? Sure. Darren is right. Oh. Darren is right. Oh, I might be almost out of them, Darren. You are? I might be almost out of them. Keep going. Aren't you like alumni at some UFO college? Can't you get some? It's a profound UFO quote. Okay, okay. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who got that? T Bone. Okay. I, oh, <laughs> there, there it goes. Karma, there goes I guess. The mic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Fell right out of the ceiling. I, f- I feel that the Air Force has not been giving out all the available information on the unidentified flying objects. You cannot disregard so many unimpeachable sources. Mute, 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 mute your mic there. Fix this thing. I can't believe you didn't mute yourself. When you're... That was John McCormick, Speaker of the House of Representatives of the nineteen of the United States, January nineteen sixty-five. My mic is broken. So probably a good time to end it then. Yeah, check out the sport cage. Got this su- is why we need support because mics are falling from the ceiling. <laughs> Eventually, my mic's gonna break because that keeps happening. Uh, check out grammarica.ca/support, guys. 
uh, like we were talking about earlier, we do need to try and push that number up if we can, so we don't have to do anything crazy. Um, so check it out. See if we can get a bunch of you to sign up this week and just get that crazy idea to Graham's head. Uh, GrahamAmerica.ca slash support. All the options are there. Other than that, we hope you enjoy this chat with friend of the show, John Brisson. And we got a bunch of great shows coming up. I think we're going to dump a bonus show out next week. Yeah. There you go. Bonus show, motherfuckers. Enjoy the chat. John Brisson. We got John Brisson back. We're going to do a little bit of a different show tonight. Kind of a black budget. It's almost like it should be in our black budget feed, really, but we're going to call this one Connecting the Dots. And uh, we've been anxious to talk to, to John, and especially with the timing of all this fucking censorship and all this stuff going on. Meme Memes all over the place. You don't know what to to connect anymore and what to just let go. So we're going to you know bring John back for some wisdom on this. So thanks for coming on, John. Thank you for having me, boys. How y'all doing? Yeah, we're okay. Good. That back in the studio after Darren's trip. Actually, we didn't even talk about that last time. So, anyways, not a mushroom trip. Yeah. But. No. <laughs> <laughs> Collecting mushrooms. Um, so, but man, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things been going on in the news. Yeah, and and I mean, lots of stuff. Like I've heard a couple a couple podcasts, and I'm really interested to get your take on this. And and people just connecting what could be like a global a global ring. Like there could be all this distraction, you know, whether it's Russia Gate or Trump in general, and all this, and and really, there's a lot of little dots being connected now that that are linking, you know, human and child trafficking and child abuse and all this going on all over the place. And yeah, and I really, you know, it'd be good to chat with you about what you think about all that because you've got some different takes on, you know, the different sides and see where we go with this. Yeah, Graham. I mean, let's start with well. Let's, this pedophile network that's been underground, it's been going for years. I mean, it was brought to light in the um, 1980s um, with the Franklin cover-up uh, that was written by John DeCamp and later the Franklin scandal that was Nick Bryan about the Franklin Credit Union um, in Omaha, Nebraska with Lawrence E. King and how they were uh, tra- supposedly trafficking uh, children uh, through elite uh, sex parties uh, that uh, Ronald Reagan – uh, was at and George H. W. Bush um, and everything in their involvement with that. So this has been, you know, it was out in the light back then. Um, it was really heavily. I mean, during that time, the day daycare abuse cases were going on, like McMartin, uh, the Glendale Monastery School case, West Point. Um, all those were happening too. So this seems to be, you know, it went silent after that for a while. Everything was labeled as a witch hunt. Um, it was a modern day Salem witch trial. You know, most of these people were declared uh innocent somehow even though you know there were definitely full blown bone you know full there was enough proof in most of these instances that molestation did you know occur um whether or not the um statements of satanic ritual abuse happened occurred which i believe in most cases that they did um but nonetheless you know it went it went quiet for about 20 ish odd years until um 2016 and uh, Pizzagate broke, which I'm pretty sure, you know, you guys are aware of or have heard, you know, Pizzagate um, with James Alafontis and accusations with him and David Brock um, and everything. But, yeah, it, it was, you know, about 20 years or so for it to get the flames to get stoked back out again, as they say. 
Well, yeah, now it's got, so, so from there, now it's gotten even, you know, even deeper, even though you don't really want to call it Pizzagate anymore because that sort of was a distraction, I think. And now, you know, Pedogate would probably be more, more of an apt term for it. But I think, I think we are seeing connections at high levels all over the place with this. I mean, it goes from Nexium and then there's the Hollywood stuff. And I mean, you can even talk about, uh, the, the, the children in cages and how that's being, being just you know a, a huge distraction I mean, it's been going on for a long time all of a sudden now it's a big deal that trump's uh escalated that whole that whole thing so i mean fuck, where do you what want are to go the children doing in the cages what the fuck what do you mean children this is the this is the you know the bo- the border you know they're getting coming over the border and really it could be you know there's there's a way to try and chop child stop child trafficking at the at the border i mean this is what I think one of the main reasons from separating them them is, and it's become a, just a big thing. Like it's Trump keeping kids in cages. I mean, for fuck's sakes, when really it's been happening a lot longer than that, all the way through the Obama administration, and it's just a bunch of uh, distraction. You mm-hmm. know, when they're catching a lot of kids are coming through without their families, or it's it, they're being trafficked. You know, or they're being smuggled in. I, you know, it's it's but they don't trafficked. even want to talk. None of the journalists are even talking about that angle or approaching it from that at all. So that's, that's one part of it. I mean, then, and then I'm seeing, uh, you know, I wanted to talk to you as well about, about all the memes, you know, Grim, Grim steak, a little shout out to Grim, uh, cruising with steak. Me and him were talking about, you know, whether these memes are just memes or whether there is being a normalization of, of pedophilia, right? This whole new, uh, sexual preference of, of adding, you know, P to the, no, that's, to the that, list. That, that's and, not real. That can't be real. I guess, uh, I'm assuming that's got to be it. Well, the picture, the pic- I mean, the official added, a- 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 you know, added adding uh, P to LGBTQT, um, A or however long it is now. Um, officially, there's nothing officially there. No, because you know, it's, not, an, ever, it's any, not an official thing anyway. So No, it's not. But any banner you've ever seen is just more than likely some pedophile possibly from the envelope, you know, adding it to it or whether for acceptance. Now, I will say that there is a push. Don't get me wrong. Um, There's a push in popular culture. Um, Definitely, I believe if Hillary Clinton would have won presidency, the push would have been much stronger. There was a TED Talk that was done that was later down in Germany um, where the woman, you know, pretty much said that, you know, being a pedophile is not something that should be stigmated. Um, And and, and the reason why we have um, molestations that occur and sexual abuses occur is because of the stigma associated with it. Um, That it should be treated as a preference. Yes. Um, And there is a push for that. I mean, you know, there's a push to add it into the new version of the DSM um, as as a preference instead of a paraphilia. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely there. Now, you know, most people put disinformation out there that – it's kind of like disinformation on both sides. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see the banner, the LGBTQT, and they'll add the P to it. And you're like, oh, my God, you know, this is everywhere. They're accepting it everywhere, and it's all in all the banners, all the pride parades and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's not, but at the same time, it is, it is getting pushed by the cabal. <laughs> you know, so you kind of you got to go back and forth on it. Um, you know, it, it, it is out there and it does seem to be something that seems to be pushed, um, through media. Remember, um, did you guys ever heard of Elsa gate? Um, which was the, the YouTube videos that were being put on YouTube, um, that, um, that had a lot of overt sexual themes to them and, you know, people dressing up in Spider-Man costumes and Elsa costumes, um, you know, having getting vac- forced vaccinations and vaccinations, which I know you guys would definitely raise an eyebrow to that a lot in the videos and and just weird. You know, some of them actually having kind of seem like abortions and just very weird computer generated videos of daddy finger and like look like trauma of children screaming in, in different times during the video and and it's spiders and scary iconography uh, that you would not want your three year old child to watch. But yet it was up there. And, you know, Disney, they do copyright claims on mostly anything. You know, I mean, you put, you have a video of you, you know, dressing your family up in, you know, Disney costumes and acting out, you get a copyright strike usually. But these videos had millions upon millions of views and were left up there. And Disney never did any copyright strike on them at all, which I find that very suspicious. Don't y'all? I mean, you would think something would have been done about that. 
Is it still on there? No. Some of them are, yes. Some, Some of, of the them are still, still up. up. Yes. But a lot yes, of them got taken it, down. Not nearly enough correct. of them. What What would I search? Uh, Spider-Man, I, Elsa, flag to vaccination. Yeah, search Spider-Man, so Elsa, vaccination. Go on YouTube first. Yeah. Yeah, and then meanwhile, they're censoring, you know, um, Isaac Weishaupt and uh, Stefan Molyneux and Alex Jones. Us and us now, too, you fucks. You know, I mean... See, I th- it, see I'm going to put a spin on the Alex Jones thing, though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine, but it's still, it's still, um, there's other people, not just him, you know, it's not I agree. just... Yeah. I agree. I think the I- Isaac Weishaupt and I think the Jay Dyer thing is genuine. Right. I think Josh Reeves, he got a counter, he got a strike after he released uh, a little teaser clip for the Spellcasters, too. Um, which hopefully is going to be out very soon. And you guys hopefully will have Josh on soon after his movie is out. He was also, uh, you know, demonetized on, 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 on YouTube afterwards. So I do think there is some legitimacy to this, yeah. but I don't think there's any legitimacy to Alex Jones. I think this is a front. His numbers dramatically increased visitations to Infowars.com after the de- quote unquote de- deplatforming occurred. Um, you know, with, with Alex Jones's connections to the Council for National Policy um, and the John Birch Society and the fake truther movement, it really makes me pause to think of why they would put it would take him down when he is quote unquote part of the system. Um, so I think for him, it's just a way to drive traffic to him. Um, and now the other people that got taken down, I think they really were more close to the truth, like Weisenhop, Reeves and Dyer. You think, you um, think that Molyneux, you think that really you think Joe, well, Molyneux would be, ac- would be accurate as well. I mean, he's just pushing the free speech angle really. And I mean, he's, he's so popular now that they're, you know, they're, uh, well, he's all, he always has been, but I think that's more of, of that. They don't like his message. I mean, they kicked, you know, they, <clears throat> you know, they stopped him from speaking in New Zealand there. That was a farce. I mean, that, you know, it's getting to that point now where you can't even share, you know, alternative ideas that aren't hateful, you know, without being, this without is, being banned. This is fucked up. So, so, um, I mean, do you think that they, they knew that that would increase Alex traffic though, really? Or is that a backfire? Oh, I mean, yes. Uh, oh, yes. And they run with Yes. A lot of them. And, so, and it and it will it, it will increase Weisenhop's book sells Dyer's book sells Batman's to some degree. Batman's in this motherfucker too. Um, <clears> okay, <throat> hey, we're just and, in the middle of something here, Darren. And it, and so it will. I think Jones was definitely set up. I mean, it it it, it I, if it wasn't, I'd be I'd be extremely I'd be shocked. Um, so what's the point then to increase the the polarity the other side to keep the fucking sides you know sort of fighting to give him a little bit more yep it's the right it's to show the right left paradigm i mean look at alex jones for example and um you know alex jones now listening to him is like listening to a slightly woke rush limbaugh i mean alex jones is calling the chinese uh the chai comms now that's a rush limbaugh council national policy term uh since the 1990s uh, you know, I mean, Alex Jones, he's so bought in with the CMP's rhetoric in their language now that he's not what he used to be at all. Or what he maybe he ever was in the first place. Um, but, yeah, I definitely think that this is just to get more eyes on him for this further division and brought back into the left right paradigm. I mean, how many of us two or three years ago? Uh, would have said every president's in on it. We don't agree with the left, right. Uh, you know, we don't do with labels of liberals or conservatives or anything like that. Yeah. Well, how many people are brought into that now? How many people have, and I myself, I became, I'll admit it. I voted for Trump and I got brought back into it too. Okay. I should have known better. I always said the next president when Obama was president was going to be the, the last it was going to be the last time they milked the golden cow to its death, the last milk that they got out of the United States udders, and that's what we're seeing right now with the economy. And, you know, I was, I got bought into it. I got bought into the whole left-right paradigm again, and now I'm looking back, you know, a little bit more wisdom, a little bit older. It's been, you know, a few years, and I'm looking back, and I'm like, well, hot darn. <sighs> I can't believe I fell for it. I can't believe... Since 2008, they made me fall for it. Well, since 2008, well, no, it's since the last few years. I mean, you know, like... No, I mean, I've been woken in 2008 is when I got woke is what I meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but why would the CMP want this then? It's hard to imagine why they would want 
to take the risk to take the risk of shutting Alex down off all these big platforms in hopes that he gains more viewers through an app. I mean, it just I don't know. It seems risky. I know, I know exactly why and, and why they shut Alex Jones to get to drive more traffic to him and to get more of this left white division. Alex Jones about a month and a half back released a video that he was completely wrong about the FEMA camps. He's completely wrong about Rex 84. That they that Oliver North was doing his best to help us during that time that Latin America was going to fall and the FEMA camps were to put the Latin Americans in instead of putting what the plan was released that they were to put in, which were dissidents of the Nicaraguan war that was supposed to happen. American dissidents were supposed to be put in those camps. And I was completely wrong about the FEMA camps, guys. Completely, 100% wrong about them. I mean... He's uh, Josh Reese. I've been saying for years, Alex Jones is going to be the one that's going to steer us into the FEMA camps. So why? You know? So why? But why? What does that have to do with the CMP making to this happen get, now? Or what? To get this, it's it's to create the further division. How many people are now going to think that Alex Jones is legit? That may have been wavering beforehand because he was taken down on all these platforms. How many people is it going to put their re- re- reinforce their faith in Alex Jones? That now that he's been deplatformed. Yeah, I can see all that, but it just still seems fucking risky. I mean, I don't know, but but what? I mean, could there be? I mean, Jay Jay Dyer was talking about this pedo stuff for a while. So was didn't Alex go a little deeper in it recently? Is that could, couldn't you look no. at? Wasn't he talking to somebody that was involved in all that? He was talking to Isaac Cappy, but he Jones actually denied satanic ritual abuse for the most part in that Isaac Cappy interview. He was lukewarm. Cappy was talking all over him, which is weird. No, very few people ever go over Jones, but Isaac Cappy was about his allegations about Seth Green and Macaulay Culkin. You know, Isaac Cappy was an actor uh, who helped wrote help write Thor um, and who acted in a lot of. Um, a lot of you know B movies and stuff like that, and allegations he's recently came out about Seth Green and Claire uh, Grant um, possibly uh, being pedophiles, um, and him having knowledge of that because he was friends with all them. He was friends with Seth Green and Claire Grant and uh, Dane Cook. They're all a, a group of friends, right? Um, and he, Alex Jones had Isaac Cappy on, but the issue with that is, is he kind of Alex Jones gave a, a weak list, limp, limp listed interview. Yeah, Isaac but are you expect maybe your expectations up. are too much. I don't know. No, Alex Jones has always gone hard. If you listen to the interview he did 2006 with John DeCamp, um, or 2004-2006 with John DeCamp, the author of the Franklin cover-up, he was asking some of the right questions back then. Hmm. Um, he just doesn't anymore. Now you could say, well, what, maybe it's because he's afraid of the... <sighs> maybe he's afraid of the what? I don't know. I was going to say, like you said, maybe he's afraid of the backlash. Yeah. But my answer to that is, is why speak the truth for years and yeah, now be yeah. too afraid to yeah. speak it? Yeah. yeah, it's so complex. I don't know what the answer is, but I know is there's it a lot Trump's of... Trump's in office now? They don't want to talk about it, I guess? I don't know. We got someone in the chats that says, Jones is doing the same thing Rogan did. Slowly stop talking about something and slowly insert backslides on real issues while trying to keep as much audience as possible. Wow. Yep. Yeah, some of that is true. Yes, he wants the, he wants to keep his numbers. And he wants to keep the money. I agree with that. And well, and he's and he's stopping to talk about certain things, like you're saying. Like obviously, he's following you know a CMP agenda, which is along parallel with the other the other side, right? Just to create yes. division and keep us separate. Hmm. Because so, that's what they want. They want this right left paradigm. They want us to be divided again. And look, we're divided again. Yeah. Look how divided we are. I know it's crazy. As a country, but I mean, the problem. But, but, but that's how it is the United States. But how does this not backfire when there's more hate, more calls for violence that is being left alone, and yet these guys that are, you know, that there are speaking truth in a lot of ways. I mean, Alex is still touching on a lot of a lot of truth, but they're they're censored, they're taken off. Yet these other things are left. I mean, is that going to backfire? Don't people are going to realize that? This is going to all come back around to the other people. I mean, it's going to come back. You can't start censoring some and then have it just stop there. The only way is if they push people to you guys, people like Josh Reeves and, and Ed Opperman and stuff like that. If they, if they pushed, you know, if Alex Jones is, is the community went to this, all this is going to do is get people 
who, who might wake people up to Jones, but they're going to wake up to Jones's CMP platform. You got you understand? They're not going to wake up to the truth. They're going to wake up to a watered down tr truth movement version of it. That's the problem. They're going to they're not getting they're not getting anything that they would get on the interviews that you guys are doing here. They're not getting anything that they would get from other people that I, you know, trust in the business. You know, they're getting Alex Jones who's putting on CMP people like Roger Stone, um, Larry Pratt, uh, Joel Skousen, um, you know, all these people that are CMP members, he's putting them on and they're giving you the information. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so how is that all connected? If you look at the higher level Nexium thing and, and there's, you know, when I heard Jay talk about it, I mean, there's, there's a lot of connections. Like if you had that typical conspiracy wall with all the pictures and the and the threads connecting it all, I mean, it's getting pretty dense right now. Maybe and it's hard. My shed. And it's hard to ignore. Boy, well, yeah, let's do it. I should, should put. You know what? Background in the shed. We should put one in the studio. I should change one of my walls here and no, just no. put that on no, here no, too. No. I think I'm gonna. No, do it at home because it, it's you know it really does it really does i mean we need a 3d virtual reality one where you go in and you pull the threads and you slide through this you fly through this ether and you're yeah. grabbing well, you're you have going to fly. from you, you have know to fly well yeah because it'd be more effective and then you can you know go from this organization to these people and pull on these people and it goes to this organization and it just goes on and on f forever i mean when does it ever end I mean, when Titus and I were on the last time, you know, Titus asked that, when does it ever end? And I don't know if it ever does. I mean, N NXIVM, you know, people say they have connections to um, Clinton, you know, Clinton Foundation and everything, Nexium. They also got connections to the Bronfen family. Um, and, you know, you know, Claire and Sarah Bronfen, the, the Seagram heiresses, they were um, – they were part of the Nexium cult. Um, and actually, Claire Bronfen was just arrested. Um, with similar charges that were that were put on Allison Mack uh, for uh, slavery and everything. She had to post, I think it was like a $100 million bond. Um, and, you know, the Bronfins, they were part of the Council for National Policy. Um, they were part of the, the right wing uh, paradigm. Um, Edgar Bronfin Sr. was a huge Zionist. Um, huh. So when you look at all that, it's it's not it's both the, the Nexium thing is very interesting because it's both sides. It, it connect, it's up up higher. It connects both. It connects everything. Yeah. yeah, and I'm wondering if they're pushing it out to try to implicate one side the quickest. Because I mean, Roger Stone, he had connections with Nexium. He he claims himself there was a guy. I think his name's McKinnon. He does the Antidote YouTube channel, um, which is a lot of very you know the jews did everything type propaganda and stuff but he does bring some good points about roger stone and about trump sometimes so i listen for that stuff um but he um he called into infowars and uh, called roger stone and asked him about this article that wayne madison and you guys can you know look it up right now and i'll type in wayne madison infowars roger stone israel and Wayne Madison wrote an article for Infowars that's still up in 2008, say the G, you know the GOP and Israelis are running honey traps in quotation marks, and it talks about Roger Stone and his involvement of taking down Elliot Spitzer and the Miami Velvet Club and everything. But what's interesting is is because of that article, he asked him if Stone was involved with Nexium. And Stone actually claims that he was involved with Nexium. He claims for two weeks, no longer than that. And once he found out it was a sex cult, he didn't want to have anything to do with it. I find that extremely hard to believe because the allegations against Roger Stone is that he took Roy Cohn's old sexual blackmail brownstone ring. Uh, Roy Cohn was Trump's mentor. Uh, Roy Cohn and Roger Stone were friends. Um, and he took that information and continued to run it. Um, so it's interesting that he left Nexium, quote unquote, because they were running a, a blackmail ring, you know, a, a trafficking ring. Uh, but yeah, he was running his own. I just just this is line up to me. Um, what do you guys think about it? I don't know. It's uh, it's all you, buddy. I don't know. No, it's it's. I I think that uh, it is implicating multiple multiple sides, and it seems to be. 
like I said, I, if you really start pulling on the threads, it goes pretty deep all over the globe, really. And um, it's then you get into the Hollywood thing and you get into some of the stars and all that stuff and the borders and the real traffic that's going on. And, and then you get into the, 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 the priest stuff where all those, all those guys recently were busted, but people are bitching about there. Nothing happened to them really. And then, you know, then you hear about all the, I think it's fake news about Trump arresting all the pedophiles. So they're throwing that in there. And then the memes, the memes really that are being thrown on from one side to, I think, try and make it seem like it's being normalized maybe more than it is being normalized this whole pedophile thing which is scary and then uh and then you get the 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 problem from one side accusing like i saw some accusations against an antifa one of the antifa leaders antifa. and uh you know saying that he was a pet they're calling him a pedophile and i guess he was um he was busted for having a sex with a 17 year old when he was 20. And I think that that's a stretch. Like you now, 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 all of a sudden, you're making you now, you now the opposite thing is happening, where you're making it seem like uh, you know any any sex with anybody under eighteen, even if you're twenty, is is pedophilia. And I, I think that's bullshit. So that's muddying the waters on that side. Yeah, I agree with you on that. There should be a tier of ages, you know, in, in countries and stuff like that. I mean, it's usually how it is. Like I, I think you know, definitely would not think a fifteen-year-old or twenty-five-year-old should be okay. No, exactly. I'm not saying that at exactly. all. Exactly. But I'm saying, like, for example, like an eighteen-year-old and a sixteen-year-old. I mean, come on. I mean, but it's technically illegal in some yeah, states, yeah. you know. Um, but to label so, it that is not like to me. Pedophilia should mean children, right? It's 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 not. Well, it you does. Know, I mean. The technical thing for that is in phibophilia. Right. I thought but once they are I thought once they got over a certain age it became statutory rape. Yeah, or sexual assault. It does, but they're still labeling it as pedophilia. That's my oh, point. See, That's yeah. my point, is that it should be called what it what like it's really supposed to be called, right? It's not like if you're twenty and, and you know, you were the seventeen year old, it shouldn't be called pedophilia, right? It's that's that's muddying the waters from the real issue that's going on, which is people are torturing and, and having sex with kids, right? That's the problem. Which I'm probably, which I'm and they're get trying to letters. say that this is what pedophilia is. They're trying to say that it's like the I'm, same, but it's not. I'm probably going to probably gonna get some letters for this, but it's kind of the same as saying catcalling is the same as rape. You know, uh, yeah. combining both of those, and you'll see that. You know, you'll see America. that com. You're 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 diluting it, you know. So it's the same thing as calling a phobophilia, which you know is is wrong. You know, it, it depends on the instance. An 18 year old and a 16 year old, which is technically a phobophilia, or a 20 year old and a 16 year old, I guess would be a phobophilia. Maybe a 20 and 16 years a little bit too young. But yeah, but is that is that is that is that considered that though, or like because what's the definition? Phobophilia. A def definition of phobophilia is attracted to late adolescence, so anywhere between the ages of 15 and 19. Huh. Yeah, that's I didn't know that. So there's that's a term for that. So the yes, yeah, so there is a, there is a term. nineteen so to late out the lessons. So. Just like uh, maturity different he, level. Hebophilia, I think, is like ten to fourteen or eleven to fourteen or something, and pedophilia is before hebophilia. Oh, okay. What about okay. grabbing a boob? Is that rape? Uh if is it a wanted advance? Yes. Was it naked? <laughs> what? <laughs> molestation but yeah i mean i i can understand what you're saying graham that they're labeling everything as pedophilia yeah um even when it's not and that can be a problem because you start muddying the waters you know and you start um you know you, then you start saying well every, everybody's calling everything pedophilia exactly um, then it loses its power because it's just like it's just like what people are calling um what's the other one that's lost yeah and uh conspiracy what, what's the other one i'm thinking of it's kind of lost Bro its jobs. power because it's uh, it's been it's been used so much. Oh well, the Nazi thing, right? I mean, the same thing. Like now, everybody or racist, even you know, you can call everybody's calling everybody racist, and then it no longer means the same thing anymore. Yeah, it's the same thing. Um, I mean, it's it, then, but then being again, there a are... racist ain't so bad when everyone else is a racist. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh being a God. Nazi. <laughs> My biggest thing is, and I'm probably gonna get some flack for this too, but I don't, I don't care. Is everybody still tries to defend James Gunn, even though the new stuff came out with him about him being at a party that had like to catch the predator type themes of him dressing up as a priest and yeah. you know 
normal, uh, you know, normal women dressed up as like little girls and stuff like that. Everything that's fine. All the tweets that he did, we should forgive him for that and everything. But Roseanne makes one exactly. uh, racist tweet. And she gets axed. And Gunn did get axed, yes, but there are people who still want to bring him back. So my question to people is, what's more offensive, racism or pedophilia? Yeah, well, not only that, but you can't have it both ways. Like, it's the hypocrisy is unbelievable right now. You have these people that are defending him and yet kicking people off of... uh, off of platforms for way less than that. Like, something that's even even subjectively hate speech. I mean, ugh, it's just... The thing is, I like Guardians of the Galaxy. I liked um, James Gunn's brother. Uh, I can't think of his name. He was Kirk on the Gilmore. Peter Gunn? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, it's, not, it's not that I don't like his work, but, right. I mean, the stuff <laughs> that came out, he shouldn't have been working for Disney. I mean, Disney's supposed to be a family company, of course, not gonna say anything, but there's been some allegations. Um, kind of you know, but that being uh, stuff that they put in their media and stuff that they try to push and everything. What's well, like Darren, stuff? you were reading, you were watching that YouTube video there, right? With uh, Elsa and the thing. What's that? You you said, holy shit! You're making some comments, but we're in the it's middle of the conversation, weird. so it's just weird. Weird what? Like how? Mm-hmm. The videos make no sense. Yeah, it's, it's just, just like, fucked up, and there's a million views almost. It's got to be kids watching it. Yeah, it is kids watching. Yeah, it. That's what says scary. four it's, kids in the title. Yeah, it's parents who just put a tablet in front of their kids and put on YouTube Kids, <sighs> assuming that it's going to be safe for them to watch. And <sighs> almost nothing Fuck. on YouTube Kids is safe for kids. Nope. Huh? huh. I stopped no, my daughter. Oh, hang on a sec, John. Art. Fuck. Darren's falling down, and the mics are disconnected, and the earphones are no. off. Everything's destroyed. How's that? Yeah, um, we're back. Oh my God, <laughs> John! You guys there? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. Now, here's the biggest thing. Do you guys remember during PizzaGate? I'm only calling that because it pertains to PizzaGate. I prefer the term PedoGate. Yep. Um, what happened to DonutGate? Do you, do you oh, guys? Well, we'll get there. DonutGate. That's the new one. Um, but Spam you guys remember gate is the, coming. the thing? <laughs> the thing that they were calling um, they were calling Cheesy Bay. Um, that were the, there was this guy who was selling uh, broken uh, hard drives on eBay for two to three to four times their price. And then uh, people found out that those um, – and he was in – he was he listed as a friend on Comet Pizza P- website, and he was in the Podesta emails. This guy named David Stone who called himself David Flintstone, where he was selling these hard drives supposedly, allegedly, and they had mm. child pornography on them. Jesus Christ. And a lot of people don't know that part of Pizzagate, and it was pretty much, I looked through it, it seemed legit. And in his place, my prop, remember when um, John Podesta talked about the hot, the hot dog stand in Hawaii? I was going to say Hawaii had something to do with that. Yep. His property you do it with was in Hawaii. In <laughs> Wait. So, so I didn't read I any know. of those emails, so I'm, I'm a little behind. I'm just going to. Pizzagate emails? Yeah. We don't have time to go back to that. Okay. <laughs> no, that's been covered way, way, way too much. Put it this um, way. There was lots of code, and it was very, you know, nefarious. If you, it, It's impossible that it didn't, something's not going on with that. I mean, I'm not going to say. Either it was exact, drugs or kids. Yeah, something weird. Whatever. I mean, there's too many <laughs> weird encrypted emails to, to not be something. Okay. But it's more than just the emails. It was, you know, the James Alphonse's Instagram and his connections with David Brock and oh, the, uh, the stuff along Ab- Comet Pizza Ping Pong. Abramovich. And, I mean, the art. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes on and on. Or even like the even the Kirk Podesta King, brothers, even the Podesta brothers getting being in that town when there's that wanted ad out for those two guys. It looked exactly like them after that. Madeline McCain disappeared. Oh, I mean, really? Just, you're sure this stuff isn't is not fake news? Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you look at the that stuff one, that we're talking what about, it's me? yeah, it's it's too many. Well, I just you know, Graham says Insta, there's no fake news on Instagram. I sometimes. didn't say so no. I, I said there's very little <laughs> now because people are aware of it. They don't want to be called fake news, so the fake news is almost left to the mainstream we, media. We seem to have reached a place where Graham's if it's on Instagram, Graham <laughs> seems to think it's real no matter what. So I just got to make sure that you know I'm. I never said that. I said it's way better than it was. <laughs> Most of the time, if you ever get an article from Neon Nettle, 
um, more than likely most of the time it's false. Uh, Ooh, there was another metal. one too. Yeah, those neon nettle, you'd see a lot of fake news that was unsubstantiated that would come out of there. Uh, there was another one I don't remember, but you saw a lot of that. And some of that was supposedly, according to Neil Sanders, tied back in with um, the Mercer family in Cambridge Analytica that would link itself back up to Trump and the Council for National Policy. Huh. And Facebook. Yes. Facebook showing ads of fake news that actually was fake news. And I mean, as the thing is, is you get a lot of that's the thing is, is where did Pizzagate come from? Roger Stone. Really? Yes. For some reason, for some reason, I thought it was I felt like it was organic and it was more sort of stumbled upon. If you do the research, Yoshi Shimatsu reported, others reported it. It was started by Roger Stone. Hmm. Uh, do you now, think it? Do you it think it served this? its purpose, or? I think a few things happened. One, it waked up a lot of people. Uh -huh. Two, it sadly, yeah, woke a lot of people. Two, it sadly converted a lot of people to back to this left-right paradigm nonsense. For example, very few people who talk about the child trafficking, you know, Trump's going after them pedos and stuff like that, which is absolutely not a lick of proof that that's happening at all. Um. He, they never mentioned the stuff that happened previously, like the Franklin cover-up and the Franklin scandal that involved George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan and everything like that. You don't ever see them mention that because that's a right thing, you know, where the left thing is more like the Clinton Foundation and Haiti and Laura Silsby yeah. and all that. You know, you never see the right, you know, someone like me, I'll say it happens on both sides, yeah. you know, the aisle, but they won't do that. And that's a problem. You don't see Michael Flynn talking or Michael Flynn Jr. talking about the Franklin scandal, but you see him all the time talking about, you know, which are both probably more likely CMP, um, talking about Pizzagate, Pedogate, Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, John McCain, but they're not talking about the other side. And and if anybody ever does that, it should really make you wonder. You know, they're, they're well, it's all not, it's, yeah, but it's not, it's not as, it's not as obvious or it's not as, easy or something there's something different about the two sides like the two cabals where there's there seems to be way more evidence out there and i don't know if this is just because it's a a better job done propagating it from the from the other side but it just it seems to be outweighed quite a bit do you know no. you, know, you know what i'm getting no. at no you're 100 percent wrong there is just Boom. as much if not more evidence that the right was involved the republicans were involved through the franklin scandal through the Franklin cover-up that happened in the 80s, there is just as much, if not more, evidence that links them. No, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about actual evidence. I'm talking about um, today's modern memory, or you know, the modern, the mo the the contemporary stuff that's happening. Like it, it feels like it's 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 shifted over to the other side. All, all the like, roll that back. What? Say that again. The m modern memory. Before that. Contemporary. What are you talking about? Well, you said you weren't so worried about whether it was true. But you no, no, no. I'm not talking about. He, I understand oh. what he's saying. I'm not talking about the actual evidence. I'm talking about the perception, the okay. perception of contemporary evidence. Yeah, like that's true. Thirty years that's ago, true. it was the right that was in the spotlight of all this. Now it's the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, but they're both still yeah. doing it. Right. Hashtag me too. So, so, uh, what was I going to say? Fuck. It's, it's a tricky, tricky yeah. subject. Um, but there is people getting arrested for it though. I mean, I don't think all of that's fake, is it? I mean, he's. <sighs> We're not seeing any. Okay. So the people that are getting arrested, if you go back, you see like 300 people busted yeah, yeah. for, you know, most of the time it's human trafficking. It's not even listed as child trafficking or no you know, pornography, child pornography is found or anything like that. And most of the time, you know, you won't see any, like, what about the, are these arrests real or prosecutions happen from it? Will court cases happen from it? Right, None of this right. has anything to do with Donald John Trump. Right. Um, this has to do with local police agencies, maybe federal agencies, but they're more like, like, that's, that's my biggest thing is this one thing, but the whole QAnon thing and everything is, is this is, if this was four years ago and you told the average conspiracy theorist, do you trust the NSA? They would say, hell no. They would laugh at you. 
now all these cute people trust NAC because it's in the hand of a few patriots who now got the information. And the same as all the other alphabet agencies. Give me a freaking I break. know, but John, it really feels like if it would have went the other way, we'd be Ooh. fucked, man. I mean, it oh, really does. Screwed. It does feel like it feels like and I'm not saying this is the case, but it really does feel like the globalists were about to take over the world and this was the fucking sliding in at the last second and saving it. It does feel like that. That's and I'm they, not saying that's it is like that, you, but and it, that's how they got you. Yeah. But that's what it feels like. I mean, it feels like, Hey, too. Hey, they we want to have, we want to have, we want you Here to be safe and Let's have a, have a job and, and move on, on. build the economy. And like that. Oh. And it feels like if it didn't, if that didn't happen, we'd be fucked. We're I fucked. Agree. If Hillary Clinton would have won, Probably be World War Three with uh, Iran over Syria right now. One hundred percent agree. But that, might be, com- but that, that might, might be coming. That might be coming. No, I, I know, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not unaware of that. But it would have to be. I think it would have to be quite the false flag or quite the fucking lie because people are awake to the fucking bullshit and the lies now. I mean, everything that comes out of the mainstream media is. I, I disagree. I think they've been lulled back to sleep now with half the pay- half the, the the people who were woke previously bought back in with Trump. I'm not going to say, look, Trump's the best president possibly since we've had since John Fitzgerald Kennedy Jr., okay? I agree. Since John Fitzgerald Kennedy. But the problem is, is... Not JFK Jr., I'm sorry. JFK. Speaking of JFK Jr. Hold on. The the QAnon thing you're about to get to. (laughs) But I don't know why I said JFK Jr. I don't know what that was. But with JFK and... He's the best president as we had then, but that's not talking. That's not saying much. I mean, look who was president. Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, H. W. Bush George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, um, you know, Jimmy Carter, Gerald R. Ford, uh, Barack Obama. That's not saying much. That's like comparing crap apples to crap apples. It's a pretty racist thing to say, John. <laughs> I just... But what's your point about was, that, though? When I was on the show, when I was on the show a couple of months ago, I was more lukewarm on Trump. I'm about one percent think Trump that Trump's our guy now, and I think all I led maybe less than one percent. What were you next. before? Maybe fifteen percent, twenty percent. I still knew where all his connections, the CMP and Roy Cohn, and. And all his connections, everything, but overlooked it just because some of the things that he was doing, I was thinking may have been steering us in the right direction. I know, but they're Maybe. doing a fucking masterful job of hating him. Like it's 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 never been like this before. It's never no, been hate, like this no, before. No, 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 no. They hated JFK. Not like this, though. Come on. I mean, not with people no, they, people out no, there no, no, protesting no, no, no. and yeah, and lying JFK. and calling him names and misconstrued. I mean, come on, it's, it's, it can't be J- this bad. No. No, no, no. There were posters put up with JFK's by the Hunt brothers right before his assassination in Dallas were put up with crosshairs, and many people hated JFK because they thought he was a communist. It was out Common there. Bastard. It was known. It was pushed. There was hatred for JFK. Now, you could say, well, that means that JFK was legit, and, and that means Trump's legit, too, because he's getting just as much hate, if not more. And I would say... Wasn't JFK it, also had ties to make America first, and wasn't he a little was crazy a too? Sympathizer to some degrees, and he did have Addison's disease. I don't think he was crazy, and he was sexually blackmailed in orgies in Europe and stuff like that. Allegedly, the look at the, the look of recluse. If you want to see see that information, um, but yeah, I mean, is has any of our presidents ever been for America? Has any of the prime ministers of Canada ever truly been for Canada? Um, it. it what so what are you saying? Are you saying that 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 that's why it's so prevalent because he is for America then, but it's just for America in a, in a different. It's it's still non left or like I I just don't I can't. It's hard for me to reconcile. It's hard for me to reconcile them go. them pushing us farther yeah, apart to right and yeah, left, and yet, and yet uh, still have now. Donald being. For America, like well, how, I, I, well, Don, well, Donald's just going to be Donald because he's Donald. They can't control him a hundred percent. You know, he goes up there and says things sometimes that they don't want him to say. I agree with that. I still do to this day. Um, but that being said, you know, is America really truly getting better, or are we going to see the, the the rug pulled underneath the economy in the next couple of months? I mean, Silicon Valley's having some issues. Crypto sure crapped the bed. 
Uh, of course, see, everybody says it's going to come back, but is it really? I mean, I don't know. I just Trump might be the best president in the world, but when you see all his connections, whether it's the John Birch Society, his father Fred Trump was a bircher, or whether it's the connection to the Council for National Policy and people within the CMP being part of his um, group, you know, well, you know, this has been movie Josh Reese's Spellcasters movie and Cigarette Right One and Two. Um, go definitely go check that out to learn more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it, you know he had a uh, Bannon, which was CMP, Conway, which was CMP, Kellyanne Conway. Uh, he was friends with the DeVos family, which is CMP. Uh, Eric Prince is CMP. Uh, Blackwater, you know. Oh Blackwater yeah, no, he's, yeah, beyond Trump. beyond CMP. I mean, I mean, uh, why do why do people in the truth movement now think that Blackwater is a uh, good? You know, if this was four years ago and you said uh, Blackwater was good, you people laugh in your face. But now they've bought it high and mighty that Eric Prince and the Voss family and they're all on our side now. It's because of the hate from it's because of the hate from the other side. That's what I mean. No, 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 no. It's not because of that. It's because you had people like Alex Jones put people trusted and believed to push this narrative. Jones, Prince, um, uh, what's that guy? John B. Wells, um, all of them. That people, some people trusted. I didn't, but some people did. They pushed it. People like Josh Reeves. Josh Reeves didn't. Peter Dell Scott didn't. You know, you have these people who, you know, were, you know, recluse who always knew that there was something with Trump and all his connections and stuff like that. But everybody else who's major in the truth movements and all these honeypots like, you know, Godlike Productions. Um, pushing, you know, Trump very strongly. Um, the Chans, as much as I love the Chans, there's still some CIA operatives running that um, to some degree uh, with what's posted there and everything. So you get, you're getting this, I mean, when you have Flynn pushing the narrative, Hannity, who's CMP pushing everything. I mean, when Hannity starts talking about Seth Rich and starts talking about conspiracy theories, when again, if this was five years ago, we would all be hating on neocon Hannity. I mean, what can I say, Graham? I mean, am I wrong? A li- well, yeah, a little bit, I think, because I think it's coming from people are people are leaving the hate from the other side, and they're. I think. I mean, I think it's it's unsustainable what the other side's doing, and it's pushing more well, people think, to. Because, the, it's pushing the, people to believe. No, not not as much. Oh. There's but not the, there's not the same about- vi- hey there's not the same violence there there there. They're allowed to go out there and be violent on the other side, covered up, head to toe, and violent, and they're not doing anything about it. That's pushing that people. Could be a, but you don't think that could be a CMP ploy so that when Alex <laughs> Jones said, now listen to me, listen to me, just listen to me. When Alex Jones said about the Rex 84 camps that it's going to be okay when we put the liberals in there, you know, if you have liberal family members, that it's going to be okay because they need to learn that Trump's trying to save the country. OK, and Jones said that I can provide the stream that he said it on. I guess I can't. Now it's been taken down, but he did. OK, so when he's saying that stuff, don't 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 you get it? Like, that's what they're they're put. He's saying that it's OK. okay for example, you know, I have family members who are liberals and I'm not OK with them going to camps just because they are down with Trump. OK, so that's a problem. Oh, 100 percent. One of the huge head of voices saying they got to be put in there for their own good yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. i didn't know that he said that that's crazy that's 100 percent. but hurt, that it? but it d- doesn't matter who is who is the real villain with the people in black beating people up and causing violence everywhere because the people that they're supposed to be on the right side aren't calling them out they're letting it happen they're allowed they're actually pushing pushing it to happen more so yeah, and I'm saying they're pushing to happen more to get this civil war to put them in camps. The CMP wants the Turner Diaries. They want a civil war. They want a race war. I mean, I don't know what else to say. They're they're pushing it. Alex Jones. I mean, remember what Alex Jones used to say? Left, right, it didn't matter. You know, even though he pushed Ron Paul, who's part of the CMP. <laughs> Left, right didn't matter. You know, race didn't matter. He didn't push any of this stuff. And now magically, he, you know, he, he, he's, 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 Alex Jones is no different. Okay, I'll take that back. Little different than Hannity. 
I don't. When I listen to both of them now, currently right now, I hear the exact same platitudes. Just and with a different, different me. demographic, different audience. But a little still, bit of a yeah. spin, but a no, but not by much. Even Jeff Rents has now hating Trump now. Now what that's about, I don't know, because Rents is tied in all with Cash Yogi and with with uh, CMP and everything else too. But you know, you'll see the people pushing for it to happen and it's it's scary like this is what they want they want a second american civil war they want it to be right versus left or they want a race war they've been trying to foment that so i agree with you when you say that the right aren't it's it's happening on both sides they're pushing this as hard as they can and they want it and it's it's sad i i mean i don't want it to happen i think none of us do what what would be the benefit to them doing that Keeping the two party system, keeping the because the light, these lifetime politicians, it doesn't matter what party they're for. They're still in there in the deep state creating war. But, you know, and that may that may end up it's all about the war machine and the military industrial complex, I think. I mean, whether it's left or right, that's going to happen. Trump sort of seems to be delaying this and playing uh, and seems to be like actually making progress for peace. But I mean, who knows when the fucking wheels can fall off that cart. But it's the, it's the military industrial complex who has is tied to the government I mean, and all these corporations profit. that want war. They want this this to happen. So, so for profit. Yeah. Hey, John, wouldn't you say? Yeah. yeah, I mean, for profit, I mean, I mean, the Mercers who back Trump, I mean, it's, it's all for money. It's I mean, it, it, some of it's for money. Some of it you could argue might be for uh, power for, to for, keep uh, the... for a rant for a rand to fall, you know, to have the rest of the Middle East to fall for Syria to fall and Iran to fall and stuff like that. You know, some people might say that that it could be that angle, too. Um, I mean, there's many different angles that you could look at it. Uh, but that's what we're getting. You know, people were waking up at the end of Obama. You know, I remember um, when um, my father-in-law, you know, who was uh, was straight and narrow his whole life. He was in the military. He didn't believe in any conspiracy theory, but he started waking up towards the end of Obama. OK, and started questioning uh, a certain special um, school shooting that happened in Connecticut that I'm not going to mention. Um, you can mention it here yeah, if you want. Okay. I don't, know, I don't want to get taken down. That's the thing. Oh, it's not gonna take. You think it'll <laughs> you, get you, taken down? One little yeah, mention of it. Yep. You'll, Han- get the, you'll get the. You'll get the school brigade. What? Han- Handy suck. Sandy Hook. Yeah. Handy. Oh, he says oh, it. Fuck. We said, already I, talked about it earlier. Did we? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, he started waking Two up. Two strikes in one day. And, and then when Trump gets elected, this is the end. Look, when Trump gets elected, lo and behold, what is my um. <laughs> Uh, my father, he goes back to sleep, and now it starts becoming this left-right paradigm, Antifa, yeah, yeah. you know, all this, and now, you know, he doesn't believe in conspiracies anymore. Oh, yeah, I got. I remember where I was when Obama got inaugurated, and I was sucked right in. I was all like, Didn't yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I think I shed a tear. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. What was his slogan? We are change or whatever? Yeah, is that what it was? Open yeah, change. Open change. Open change, yeah. And it's like, oh, change, my God. Baby. And eight years later, like, holy fuck. Yeah, I thought open it was like, we are change or something. And that's why they couldn't have Hillary Clinton to win because it would have continued the awakening. Trump, people claim people are more woke or awakened, but are they really? I mean, <sighs> they are, but well, I think uh. you guys are looking at this from two different perspectives. Maybe in America they aren't, but I do think that in the other parts of the world, people are uh. paying a lot more attention to what's happening. Right yeah, now. yeah. But haven't they always been though? Haven't people no. internationally always? Been? No, Paid not not sure. like not like they are now. I mean. I mean, I'm pretty sure Europe, I thought, did in some places. Um, we're, we're pretty, would pay attention a lot and would be more woke into happenings of world events and stuff. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I, I, I that's, that's my question with all this is where is this, and you, you, there's no answer to this, but where is this all going? Where is this all heading? Is is, is the pedo, pedogate thing finally going to fully be exposed? Is it finally going to be brought out to light? Or is this just ways for them to bury it just like they did in the 80s and the 90s? Well, I don't think it can be. Now. I mean, now, yeah, now we have that and we have – it's it's. I think it's way too exposed. It's just going to – the threads are going to keep unraveling. I mean, it can't – and, and sooner, sooner or later people will start talking about it unless they really – clamp. I mean, they are still trying to clamp down more on climate change. I mean, you've seen the the stuff now. They're, they're talking about uh, – 
fuck, what was it I saw where there's rules against denying climate change now? And I mean, soon it'll be the same with vaccines. Like, there's a few major things, and I think you could throw a pedo gate in there that you won't be able to fucking talk about or deny. Like, soon enough, when we're talking about those three subjects here, it will be shut down. Yeah, we got to watch that. So what well, you were getting? You were getting back into pizza gate. I don't know if we ever finished off that thread where you started I talking know, about. I want to know about Donut Gate. All right, let's talk about Donut Gate. We'll talk about Voodoo Donuts in Portland. Okay? We're not putting now fucking about... Donut Gate in the title either. Okay. okay. First of all, I can't eat donuts because donuts. I got celiac disease. So. I can't eat no donuts either. I can't eat them because I can't stop once I start, and I'm hungry. But Voodoo Donuts was a um, place in Portland, Oregon, uh, that was implicated um, oh boy. last year uh, <laughs> to be uh, similar to Comet Pizza Ping Pong, and people were discovering, uh, connecting between the two. Um, and Voodoo Donuts was owned by uh, owned by Kenneth Cat Daddy Poxon and Trey Shannon, um, and there's been allegations back then. That of course you know they use a, the swirl the the little girl uh, lover oh the uh, logo, sim- that logo yeah the swirl yes um they use a, the, that for the logo they have a lot of you know a, a cult and uh, possibly satanic iconography in their stuff and everything so a lot of people and they also had now this is an unsubstantiated claim it was something that was going on that they had a very high security and a special username and password associated with their website. That you could go to similar to what was found in Comet. Um, but I find it very interesting that here recently a whistleblower came out on uh, Nathan Stoltman's show Lift the Veil. Um, and he, uh, his name was Michael Whalen. And he gives an, an, about his experience of abuse as a child and how later he was a musician. He went to Portland and he went to parties that were supposedly uh, thrown by Pogs and. Um, that uh, there were child pedophilia occurring, that he allegedly says, uh, during those parties, um, and that he had contacted um, the uh, Portland police about it, and there are police reports about that, um, and that back him up as well, that his house was burglarized, he lost $30,000 in the burglary, files were stolen from him, his dog was killed, his family was threatened, including himself, um, he was evicted from he was evicted from his house suddenly uh, after he came out about all this information um, and as he started talking about it. And he seems Michael Whalen seems very legit. Uh, he's he's a, you know taught, he gave his own satanic ritual abuse story. I think for him he seems he he seems like he's legit. I've, he's been on Lift the Veil twice, um, and you can back up and corroborate a lot of the stuff that he said about Voodoo Donuts. Um, and about what it may have gone on. He also mentioned one time that uh, Macaulay Culkin uh, was at that party, but nothing about pedophilia with Macaulay Culkin, but that he was at one of those parties that he saw. Uh, and Culkin is, Macaulay Culkin is a fan of Voodoo Donuts. Um, he is friends with uh, Trey Shannon and Poxon. Um, so that was mentioned by uh, Whalen as well. Um, and there is a strip club i can't think of the name offhand that Pogson, i believe goes to that's nearby and they had a pizza place too that they just had opened up that had weird iconography as well i wish i could remember the name of the thing but there are tunnels underneath that strip club and other places in the area that whelan had mentioned as the band he came in through those tunnels and you see tunnels throughout many cases of sa- satanic ritual abuse, whether it's McMartin Preschool, whether it's um, the tunnels that were supposedly under Comet Pizza Ping Pong, and the tunnels that are on uh, under uh, under that uh, strip club. Dante's is the name of strip club. Um, but yeah, the, 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 it has been confirmed that those, of course. That those, yeah, that's what it's based off of, and that and that has been confirmed of what those. Um, that it is true that there are tunnels there. Unlike, you know, the, the discrepancy versus Comet Pizza Ping Pong, whether or not there are tunnels, uh, even though Alphonse says he had a basement in one of his articles um, that he kept tomato sauce in, but later claimed that he did not have a basement. Um, but yeah, that's the thing over Voodoo Donuts is this whistleblower, Michael Whalen, came out and said that he witnessed pedophilia actions happening at two parties um, on Lift of If anybody, I would suggest Googling Lift of uh 
uh, Voodoo Donuts and watch Nathan Stoltman's excellent interviews, both with uh, Michael Whalen, who's a very, very, very brave individual. Has there anything else come out like about the uh, Abramovich stuff and more of the the heavier ritual stuff? No, nothing new lately. I will say one last thing about Voodoo Donuts is, is they sell a child sized coffin uh, full of donuts for about a hundred bucks. Wow. And the guy who supposedly makes it, if I remember, was also friends with James Alphonsus, allegedly. Hmm. That, makes, that makes the child coffins. Coffins, child side, child, you know, child side coffin donuts. So funny. Like you an know, actual hilarious. wooden coffin with lining yes. and everything? Yes, actually made, yes. Not a cheap factory piece of crap, something that's handmade. Is it is the donuts in there? Like that whole FBI list of all the symbolism and the definitions and all that. Is donuts in there at all? Yes, there are donuts in there. Yes, they put donuts in there. But still, nonetheless... No, I but what, it, it what does it mean? What does it mean, donuts? There's real donuts. Like, they put donuts in it. No, 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 no. Still... I mean, what does a donut mean? Like, you know how all those words have meanings in the FBI website or the FBI uh, information? I don't remember donut, and there's no official list of those terms. The only one that's officially known is cheese pizza, which stands for child porn. Oh, the walnut, all, the the, all that's all fake? Walnut, the walnut it's not thing fake. Is all... It's not fake. It's just there's no official FBI document or any official document that links those terms oh, okay. to anything. That's just what people assume they is, but, but cheese pizza is known for child porn. That has been out. I've been on 4chan since forever. People have been saying it on there since forever, so right, that's right. nothing new. Yeah. I sent I sent a link with the with the the child coffins full of donuts. Let me know. What, I, I guess you guys are looking at it now. Yes. Yeah. Is We're it creepy? What does it look like? It's weird. As someone as someone who lost weird. a child, I guess maybe I'm emotionally invested in this, but it's fucked up. Yeah, it seems weird. Yeah, it seems weird. Especially when the logo or the symbolism is the same as well, the it's other. Well, on the. Often. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I meant uh, the other logo. Oh, the Voodoo Donut logo? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but... Some of them are crosses. Some of them are skull and crossbones. Yeah, oh. it's definitely weird. If anything... Wow, well, Voodoo... It's not is, this, to me. is this weird that Voodoo Donuts, a little donut shop in Portland, has 7,200 Google reviews? No. That's not the weird. Mag- all, the magic all, is in all, the hole. No, it doesn't say mistake. that. Does it say the that? Spark, oh my god! It does. What the, the fuck? Spark, <laughs> the spot. Well, we're talking about donuts, but it, the spot. No, but the it spiral, can't be in the hole. There's nothing in the I, hole. I know it's it's the spiral. That's it was what's actually magical a boy about lover, it. Not little girl lover. But that being said, it's still. <sighs> We look at all the iconography and the names of the donuts and just all the pictures and the Instagram. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. It doesn't sit right with me. You know, maybe I'm just. I mean, all these are allegations. Nothing's been substantiated. Yeah, I was just gonna say that exactly. Yeah. Um, but. You got you. Got, just, you think that a donut shop can get seventy two hundred Google reviews? That's pretty. That's a lot oh, of yeah. reviews for a donut. What? It, oh, it, don't, it, it, it's. it's what? It's cat. Now here's the million dollar question. I'm gonna look Why up that. I'm gonna look up the famous ice cream shop in Calgary that has here, a line up down the street every day, and I'm gonna see how many Google reviews that has. Portland has two uh, nine hundred and seventy two. Well, it just means and it is don't down here for it. What? It just means it's not well known. If if a place that shows up on diners, drive-ins, and dives, that place gets this kind of traffic, right? So it's not impossible. <sighs> Yep. All right. Good point. The right, here's the million dollar question. Why are they cash only? Yeah. See, that's suspicious. <laughs> what? Especially, especially money launderers very when easily allegedly. Wait, you could never do that in Canada. People carry cash in the states way more. It's, it oh, is. Yeah. There is actually a Vietnamese sub shop in Forest Lawn. They've been cash only for like thirty years. <laughs> but damn, their subs are good. Yeah. And it's been like the same three people working there for the whole thirty years. Wow. Motherfuckers. Yeah, I mean, you got you got you got Donut Gate. They're calling it now a vast right wing conspiracy. David Brock came out and said that's what it was. It's alt right. You know, all of a sudden, only alt right people care care about pedophilia. Supposedly, I guess. I guess it's what we're doing now. Graham's um, pretty alt right. Oh my god! Yeah, he is. I am. They do call what him the 
Right. Right. Dunlop for a reason. Can you That's believe right. it? Unbelievable. He's affectionately known as Graham Alt-Right Dunlop around here. I'm Alt-Light. Alt-Light? <laughs> Alt-Right Light? <laughs> no. Definitely not that light. I was very, yeah. so, I was almost so, I was socialist for a while. You're there. just saying you're bigger than I Joe I was socialist Rogan. about, yeah, bigger, broader. <laughs> I remember not too long ago when I was for sort of more for open borders and like, you know, forget the nationality was creepy. That was after 9-11. I was like, oh, you did? Did I say it right? <laughs> and I was kind of for social. I argued my mom about it a little bit. I was like, mom, you know, social is not, there's some good things about it. And But uh, yeah, then I found out more information. Socialism, baby. No yeah. borders. Sorry, I'm just still looking at this donut website. I know, <laughs> I know me too. Unbelievable. Me too. There's the Diablo Rex. Well, the gay bar, the cock and balls. No. Yeah, I'm looking at it right here. Nothing wrong with gay bars. Not that there's anything wrong with. Oh, that. the cock. They do have a cock and balls. Oh, circle. Graham's gonna be ordering a coffin full of cock and, and balls. And they have a. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. They have a Portland cream as well. Yeah, but that's Why'd you look at me cream. like that when you said Portland? Because you love Portland. Ugh. And cream, apparently. Ugh. What a terrible thing to think about. No, it's gag. Oh, is it gag or gay? Oh, yeah, it is gay. It would be, yeah. How do you get away? Can you still say gay bar? It's on the thing. It's on the website. You're just reading. You're not yeah. allowed to read <laughs> anymore? <laughs> Depends what you're reading. Won't be long before reading's against the law. <laughs> Fucking right where we're going. They have a Marshall Mathers one. Triple, oh, how's this? Triple chocolate penetration. I mean, that's got to be mean something. <laughs> <laughs> something sexual. <laughs> the old dirty bastard. I mean, in the context of what we're talking uh, no, about. No, that's not of, the old dirty bastard. Yeah, in the context of what we're talking about, almost all of these are suspect. School days. D A Z E. Oh my God. Oh God. Well, there's only one way to find out. Graham, go to Portland and order a bunch of them. Well, up we should have stopped there, man. At, yeah. See stopped, what shows yeah. up at your hotel room. Yeah. yeah. Go to Voodoo Donut yep. and get a. Get a no, get a you have to order fashion. it to show up at your place. Yeah. See what you get. I should have gone and done a little Grimerica live investigation. Uh, let's just do it, Graham, live, and we'll see if we. See what happens. Yeah, you could probably deconstruct the we'll name a, of a lot we'll of these. Put a ones. gram cam on you. Yeah, in the context we're talking about. Yeah, sure. yeah. Well, remember, the pizza place I had to look it up, but the pizza place that was in Dante's that used to be called Lonesome Pizza is now called Pizza Slut, which it's in a strip club. But I don't pizza, know, pizza Slut, slut. that's fucking. <laughs> I've, I've been called. We've been calling Pizza Huts Pizza Slut since I was like ten, I think. Pizza slut. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It's fucking super badass. Unless now it means child sex ring, in yeah, which yeah, case it's yeah, not yeah, so it's badass not bad, anymore. Yeah. That's not what we were talking about at yeah. the time. So what do you think this is going to go, John? I have no idea. That's the thing is, is it going to blow open to the mainstream? Are people finally going to wake up? Is it finally going to come down? I mean, I have no answers to these questions. To me, it seems like the same thing is going to happen that did in the 80s and the 90s. It's going to be buried. You don't think it has, do you think it has anything to do with Jay and, and Isaac being kicked off YouTube? They were addressing and Josh, it. And, jo and Josh Reeves getting demonetized. Jay's not kicked, kicked off, off YouTube. We've talked about this. Oh, right. Well, it's, hey, it's website sorry. got shut yeah, down. Sorry, sorry, um, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with it. And I do like Jay Dyer. So are we going to get kicked off for Graham's hate speech? Do you think? Possibly. Do you think we're crossing any kicked. lines with Graham's What did I say? Uh, Abo, for one. Oh, that was way back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I... <laughs> That's like four episodes ago, Darren. What do you think? Yeah, and it was, the context was very... A racist? No, it was, it was <laughs> loving. I just didn't know any better. Uh, I just... I just don't know what to say. Like, 
Or do you guys think is? I mean, do you think Trump's dropping the hammer? I just, I just, I don't didn't like, know. I, I gave up on that. Like Darren's been, four Darren's been ago. totally disconnected. I don't give a fuck anymore. Recently, I'm going back after to I got reconnected, that's where I, tried... I belong. Not giving a fuck. That's where I do my best work when I don't give a fuck about who when the fucking focus, president of the United States is. When you're just States focusing is. on you. Not just me. I'm not. No, no. I meant it in a bastard. good way. I meant oh, it like okay. on your self work. You're doing a lot of yeah, positive lot of stuff, stuff on yourself. Yeah. So and working on even you know, America stuff. I know. That's what I mean. Instead so that's what I meant. Stuck Don't take on it my the wrong phone, way. I'm looking not defensive. at fucking Q posts. Well, so uh, I heard JFK is coming back from the dead to run for president in 2020. Is no, this JFK happening or Jr. what? Yeah, JFK, JFK Jr. Jr. He's still JFK dead. JFK Jr. was um faked his death. Was R, I guess, R, R, someone who reposted instead of Q. New Clintons and, uh, were yes. trying to kill him. Faked his he death. Faked, he faked his death. He's going to come uh, out at the Republican convention. Be like, boom, bitches, I'm back. That's what the Q, Q run by uh, the Council for National Policy, former Alex Jones and Jerome Corsi, uh, by other people in the quote unquote patriot movement, uh, like SGT report. Um, and uh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Tracy Beans, uh, all of them are got people full full that Q, uh, Q is the savior, um, and uh, with Donald Trump and uh, Michael Flynn and and uh, JFK Jr. and whoever else you want to throw in, uh, we're taking back America. Well, you know what? I mean, I JFK do have I do have hope. When when is he saying twenty twenty or after? Yeah. He's got to give Trump another term and then try and keep it in the what. So yeah. it, would, it would be it would be twenty. No, actually, I'm heard. Alex Jones told me one time that uh, Trump was going to get everything he needs to do in four years, and he's going to step down, and Mike Pence and Nikki Haley are going to be president. So what I about mean, wait? What about JFK Jr.? How, how's he coming back from the dead? Is he just 20, showing 20, up? Twenty four. He's just going on. Jimmy Kimmel. All I know is is why would Alex Jones be okay with Mike Pence and Nikki Haley for president? That's what I want to know. I That's thought what you guys need to think about. the memes I seen were saying Trump Jones 2020 <laughs> and Alex Jones is suiting lasers out of his eyes. Oh, sure. it's got to be real. I'll take it. The, here's, here's my hope is that, that change is still coming and that we can really have better economy, better jobs, less racism, no racism. I mean, really that's the hope, right? And everybody treated the same free speech and not hate speech and you know like get back to like love everybody should love oh, and America, I honestly baby. and i feel like i feel like trump's not the one dividing everybody it's the mainstream media and he's not i don't think he i mean even people that i respect and other podcasters think he's racist and he's sexist and all that he might be more sexist but he's not racist he definitely seems so you sexist. don't think you don't think the omarosa inward tape exists even though Katrina he Pearson doesn't know said, about that because he has Trump he, blinders on no he, I heard about the almost thing oh I'm a, I'm a, I I don't so you heard you heard Katrina Pearson saying that Trump was embarrassed that the tape does exist and Trump was embarrassed that he said the word but there is a tape with him saying that word he's trolling does that, have you have you has anybody heard it I heard some audio on the I think it was probably on the Philip DeFranco show and what I heard was she didn't say that specifically that he said it, but she said that it was like that he definitely could have said it. But then and he, he was also, embarrassed. She yeah. said he. She said he was embarrassed. Well, he's probably embarrassed for even being in her presence. I mean, she's a disaster. And then apparently he got a phone call later from one of the producers saying that that such a tape did not exist. Yeah, he's probably just embarrassed for even being caught up in a, in a web with her after he should have. Didn't he fire? Just, didn't he fire once already from The Apprentice? And now free, she's free back time. just. Three times. Three times? Oh my God! Learn. I just, I just say all of this. Just, I just, I don't know. To me, it seems that it's there'd be way more instances than that, John. If that's all they have is some Omarosa bullshit tape, then there's that's that's nothing. That's nothing. Compared there's there's got to the be stuff. way more than Graham that. can put up with a little racism. No, 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 because it's not. No, no, it's not there. No, it's not there. And he's <laughs> okay. Okay, well then, what about Trump's connections to the Council for National Policy? Roy Cohn being his mentor. Roy We're Cohn not talking about black. that shit either, John. No, no. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 but I, no, but I want to know how he how he's directly implicated. I mean, just because somebody's your mentor and they're Roy doing Cohn something. Roy Cohn was his mentor because Epstein. 
And, and and I actually used to debunk the Trump Epstein thing. Yeah, I thought yeah, I heard now, you do that. Now there's yeah, I I know no now I just I seen too much. It's just well tell tell me uh, what what is up? Send it to ground. <laughs> Let's just say Stormy Daniels. There's a connection that will come out eventually. Well, well she's connected to Nim Nim Nim, Nim, Nim or whatever it is, right? Nimza, she's Nimza, not, of the airship no, people. Nim, <laughs> to Nexium. Oh, oh, it hasn't well, been proven yet. Is, but what she is connected to, and it should come out, is Epstein and Trump. And, and Stormy. It's all, it's yes, it's all moving in. And it's it, and and when you got accusations. Calm before the storm. Um, we got accusations Come before the stormy of Trump's mo- Trump's mo- that's why when you guys have Opperman on he's able to break down this way better than me okay um but I, I it, it definitely I can talk more about you know Trump and Roger Stone and and Roy Cohen and all that resorts um international and everything um but the actual connection between Trump and Epstein Opperman would be better talking. Okay, about so it. what do you think about his policies, and is it better down there now? Is it better in the states right now? Is the economy doing better? People, from what I know directly, is it's doing better. Yes, in some ways, in some ways, people are still trying to find jobs. Yeah, yeah. The the unemployment numbers are bull crap. They've always been. They've always been. Yeah, and all of a sudden he's 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 going by the same bull crap numbers. Yeah. But the those, stock market rallies, stock market, you know, is rallies always been, it's, it's definitely fake. The stock market's got to crash eventually. Yeah. Silicon Valley's crashing. I mean, I'm not going to say that some good things haven't happened. And I'm not going to say that I don't like Trump's tariffs, for example, because I do like tariffs. I do think for us to have tariffs that we need to abolish the income tax. Um, but that being said, I, I some things Trump has done. I mean, we didn't get into um, – Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, even though yep. Trump did later say that he wanted to get back in it, maybe, sort of, kind of, maybe, maybe, kind of, sort of, maybe. Um, but we still haven't gotten back in on it yet. And I'm, you know, I give him props for that. You know, I give him props for um, uh, for pardon the Bundys, you know? Paris. Um, but, um, uh, you know, the Paris Climate Accords pulling out of that, yeah. Um, I give Trump props when he's doing. I did say Trump's the best president we've had since JFK, but again, that's not saying. Much. That's not good enough um, for ground. And I would rather have JFK than Hillary. I mean, not JFK, sorry, but Trump than Hillary. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, it is what it is. I just, I see all the connections and I can't buy into, I can't deny him any longer. I can't deny i just can't do it i just won't do it sorry i wish i could sit up here and tell you guys that q was right and there's probably hope for this country and things are going to be okay but i don't think it's going to be what what about uh what about um so is, is your theory about who q is still the same from yes, we last we last time it was run by the I still believe it was run by the Council for National Policy. I still believe that Jerome Corsi was controlling it and also the other people in the uh, Q movement, whether it was Tracy Beam, Beans or Pamphlet Anon or uh, SGG Report. Um, all of them had a hand uh, controlling uh, QAnon. Um, so, yes, I, and, I, and, and it's interesting that both Rents and Alex Jones know, now distanced themselves from Q and went out. Oh, well, Rents never really talked about Q positively. Alex Jones did and Jerome Corsi did for a while. Um, but now they're both saying that Q is um, uh, AI. They're both pushing the CMP narrative to throw um, eyes on them off. I've heard that actually. Q's AI. What about the spiritual aspect of Keck and and all the synchronicities and everything that's happened with that whole thing? Roy Cohn had an obsession with the frogs. He had frog wallpaper. He loved frogs. Gay he frogs? Had obsession with Keck. <laughs> I mean, is it a possibility that they just meme that into what it is? I mean, we, I mean that used to be a popular thing on H and I mean, before connected I with Alex Cone, Jones and his little memes about frogs. All, all, too. All, all I knew, all I knew about Roy Cohn was that he and McCarthy fought against the communists during the McCarthy era. Okay. But then when you actually look into Roy Cohn, he's as dirty and crooked as he's coming. He's connected to this allegedly to the son of Sam Killings. Um, that separate 
uh, pedo brownstone that we talked about um you know all that stuff so yeah it's it's when you look at it, it you can't deny it any longer once you see the full picture you know i i can't i can't i can't i can't not just throw up my hands in my ears and say i've been duped and we need that virtual reality conspiracy tree can there you go. picture it, John? Can Where you picture you can it? Fly around. In my mind, yeah. All those things you're taking. All those things you you're flying in yours. All those things you're picturing yes. there. All you. All those things you're talking mm-hmm. about are all virtually connected, and you can pull on them and move from one to the other. And so because yeah. a wall, a wall is just not big enough. You need. You well, guys, what if you just lined all the walls of the igloo and you could just roll around on the floor all the way across, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, running strings? There you go. I mean, y'all have had C.S. Joseph on, and you know he talks about typology. You know, me and and chase her friends and um uh i mean i intp and i the, one of the most famous intps in pop culture was john nash of a beautiful mind and i can see the picture like nash i can connect all the dots together and i can't deny it any longer and it pains me when people still can't see it from themselves and i understand they want to have hope i understand they want to believe that the bad guys are finally going to get it it's like in the and the in the propaganda film uh, q and on the plan to save the world i understand that i 100 percent get that i wanted that too i still want it now but it's not happening and it won't happen and, and there's enough nefarious evidence on the other side to to for you to to stay in the middle right do you know what i mean like the- just because like just because these like I got to challenge you a little bit on the on this just because people are connected through the CMP or through other organizations. Not everybody in the CMP is it knows of the nefarious dealings of the top. It's compartmentalized just like everything else. I mean Alex Jones even used to admit that the CFR was compartmentalized. They're all compartmentalized. Just because someone's in a CMP doesn't mean they don't know what's happening at the top. It's like someone's in the CFR, it means they know what's happening at the top either. It's all compartmentalized. I, I 100% agree with that. But when you have people that were in the Council for National Policy, I mean, I can sit here and name them. You know, Jack Abramoff, who was linked to Iran-Contra. Uh, Oliver North, who was a ranked to Ranch contra who's now head of the National Rifle Association. Oliver North, an alleged gun runner, uh, crack cocaine runner, you know, had deal with the Contras, Iran-Contra affair, that too with the gun running. Cocaine through Nicaragua, through Nino Blandone, and pushed by Freeway Rick Ross. Um, child trafficking allegations through the Franklin scandal. Oliver North is now head of the National Rifle Association. Colonel Oliver North, who's been on Fox News, all of that. So you tell me, Graham. Tell me. <laughs> I mean, we start. I mean, I can keep naming people: the DeVos family, the Prince family. You know, Blackwater has huge associations with the CMP. Blackwater is also allegedly security for Alex Jones and for Trump. Yeah. You yeah. think Blackwater's done good things? No, I mean no. There's a whole. Mer- it's a. Whole, they're fucking still. There's almost no good mercenary groups. Out there. Yeah, exactly. You but could yeah, they probably say now no. That these mercenaries no. are working for Trump, and they flipped. Give me a freaking break. What's that? Say that again. QAnon and people and all them. They said that that, that Blackwater's flipped. Mercers have flipped. Um, not Mercers. Um, flipped uh, the Blackwater. Prince, or- Eric Prince and the DeVos family. They've all flipped. You know, Eric from Prince and, to to Trump side. Yes, to Trump side yeah. now. Yes, yeah. which they don't even call it Blackwater anymore. I don't no, even know it's what X. It was X two or something for a while, or what was it? Some some <laughs> I don't weird. Even know what they're calling I think it it's now. been changed again since then. So, yeah, no, I hey, I'm I'm not denying any of that at all. It's it's super interesting. I'm sorry, Graham. I'm well, sorry for what? That your Trump bubble got burst. No, 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 no. I'm not. Fuck, I'm not a Trump or Trumpy, Trump okay. lover. Just Trumpeter? want fucking something Isn't good to Trumpeter? happen. Want good change. I, I agree, buddy. I agree 110%. Yeah, and I share your hope for the future, Graham. Yeah. I really do. For. And I have the same hope for the future, but it doesn't show itself. So it is what it is. I really hope that I'm wrong. That's the thing is, is I hope that I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, and QAnon is right, and Trump is right, and all this is going to happen, then I will admit that I was wrong, and I will be cheering everything on. But through all my connections I've made, through all the research I've done, I do not think that is the case, and it saddens me. Yeah. No, that makes sense Yeah, from fair. what you're saying. Yeah. Just, just don't don't ever lose, lose hope. Yeah. 
No, I don't. No I'll never lose hope. That's really all you got sometimes. You yeah. know, I, I have I have hope. I have hope that it maybe there's a slim chance that it could be overcome. Uh, but it just scares me that everybody's bought into this right left paradigm again. They've bought into it hook, line, and sinker. It's and, a shame. I mean, look and at I it. I think now. it's I mean, bad right now, too. Like, real bad. Yeah. Even Graham sucked in. I'm not sucked in. He's on the right. I'm not sucked in. I'm, not, no, I'm nowhere. <laughs> I'm nowhere. I'm in the void, dude. Are you? Yeah. I'm staying in the void. In the astral plane. Yeah. In the astral plane. Yeah. Right on, John. Right on, buddy. Thanks for coming on the show and ruining our day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boys, for having me as always. I'm sorry that I'm sorry that I'm, I I do want to end on a high note. Can I end on a high note real quick and give at least a little something positive? Please for do. Sure. Please do. Yeah. I do think it's possible that more people might be actually awake. Even if it's incorrect in the manner that I think, like believing in Q, at any point in recent history. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But it, that could go bad. Or it could go it, good. It, or it could go good. And let's hope for the best that it goes good. That's kind of what I what I meant about the level of people waking up. Because that's that's what I meant when I talked about the the fake news and the hate is waking people up. And even though maybe they're asleep on the other side, like you're trying to say, it's still, it's still a level of awakening. And once there's a couple levels, it's like a tipping point with awakening. You've, you've been through it. We've been through it. Yeah. So, and you always, and anybody out there continue to gain wisdom. Even if you think that QAnon is really legit, try to look at some information from Josh Reeves or Nathan Stoltman from lift the veil where, People that always counter your views, always counter your views the best that you can. Yeah. Because you may be wrong on something. I might be wrong. I want people to to you know debunk Trump's connections to the Council for National Policy and the John Birch Society. If you can do that, I'll rest easy. But until then, I can't. Don't take my word for it. Or don't take anybody's word for it. Research it for yourself. Right on. Thanks, buddy. That's a good spot to end on. Yeah, absolutely. We should put a bunch of links in the uh, show notes. Yeah, go for it. What? <laughs> Graham will put some links in the show notes because he's the best, best show note guy in the business. Big thanks, John, for coming on the show, buddy. Appreciate thanks, man. It's good to chat always. again. Yeah. As always, y'all, right. if you're not subscribed to Gramerica, you need to be donating, giving back to these boys. Some of the best in the business, and they deserve every good vibe and everything coming to them. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Thanks, man. See ya. We appreciate that. Bye. That was a chat with John Brisson. What'd you think, buddy? That was good. Wow. Yeah. yeah. John always never ceases to uh, amaze and entertain. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to go a little bit deeper into the pet pet stuff, but um, I think that's a good spot to just lay it that out was... there. And we didn't... Gotta yeah. be a better way to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. And sometimes it's not best to just jump in with two feet. No, <laughs> it's totally. It's nice to warm up totally. to. Yeah. It's a heavy topic. Warm up to some coffins yeah. full of donuts. But if nobody talks about it, nothing will ever change. So are they trying to insinuate that there's something under the donuts? I don't know. In the coffin? I think it's just a cheeky little thing. Is it just a cheeky? Like, like maybe it's a, like, just, um, like a logistics method? Like well, have you, have you, have you, have you, you've, everyone's seen like Space Jam, right? Space Jam. No. no. Like the movie? No. Okay, well, Bugs Bunny gives his players some magical water, which is just water, but he tells them it's magical, right? So it's nothing. Nothing makes it magical. I think that's just, it's just a, like a cheeky little I joke miss Bugs Bunny. You would. That people do. You know, like the secret ingredient for the Krabby it's Patty. It's like the placebo yeah, effect. No secret yeah, ingredient, to totally. Right? So it's, placebo. Hmm. I feel like it's just like a poor joke. There you have it. So, yes, yeah, always good to chat with John. Yeah, always good to chat with John. And... Up over 300 now. <clears throat> support the show, guys. Go to slash support. Graham has lost his voice from using turkey voice. spam and podcasting. <laughs> Go America.ca slash support. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We will see you next week. To the wolves, playing the gang, ganging 
up on me My game's no rules But you can't face me Cause I'm crazy Grooving to the tambourine Riding in my Lamborghini Eating on some tangerine Grooving to the tambourine Riding in my Lamborghini 